Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Tuesday, November 24th, 2020 Committee of the Whole. We're already at the end of November, almost. I'm Christine Robinson, Mayor of West Gray. We have all members of council present and we have a quorum. Today, we are using both audio and video to conduct this electronic meeting. Um, as I've identified on item one, I've called the meeting to order and we are all ready to go with the most interesting agenda. This, this meeting is being recorded and will be posted on the West Gray website. The website being www.westgray.com. Technology for this meeting is being managed by staff and, and I, I need, need not say, but I, but I will say it for this meeting, meeting please refrain from clicking buttons, buttons unless you are prompted. Before, Before we begin, I will, I will ask Supervisor, Supervisor Hewlett, Hewlett to walk us through some of the, some of the other, other features of the Zoom meeting, meeting software. software. So, so with that, that I will turn, turn it over, over to Supervisor Hewlett. Thank you. Good morning and thank you, Mayor Robinson. Before I begin, if you get disconnected at any time, you can dial 1-647-558-0588 and enter the meeting ID 8541749-3006. Both members of council and staff have been briefed on the various features of this Zoom meeting software and will be using the raise their hand function to speak. Members of council will be using the green check mark to vote in favor of a motion and the red X to vote against. Each member of council following a vote will then be called upon verbally to confirm their vote for the benefit of any guests who have called in rather than joining us using the online meeting software. If you have any technical issues for members of the public throughout the meeting, you can send a chat message to myself, Cody Hewlett, Recreation Supervisor, and I will attempt to assist you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Supervisor Hewlett. On item two, members of council, declaration of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof. Is there sorry, anything sorry to, to declare at this time? Sorry to interrupt, Mayor. Um, yeah, you're very echoey this morning for some reason. You know, why are we getting an echo? Thank you very much for that feedback. Uh, I am looking to staff to correct the problem. Thank you. So with that, Supervisor Hewlett, I have my microphone on. Would you prefer me to turn my microphone off and just utilize the mic item on my uh, computer? Thank you, Administrative Assistant, uh, Lindsay Glazier. Uh, Councillor Hutchinson, uh, thank you for raising it. How is the audio now? Yeah, it sounds, it sounds better. Okay, at any point, members of council, if there is um, less than appealing audio, please let me know and uh, we will uh, endeavor to fix it. So thank you for that. So again, just on item two, declaration of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof. Is there anything to declare members of council sitting as committee of the whole? Seeing none, we are now moving on to item three, business arising from the previous meeting, 3.1 staff reports. Following along, we are on to the first report, which is 3.1.1, committee of council review. So with that, Clerk Starbuck, I wonder if he could read the recommendation. I will look for a mover and a seconder and then uh, we'll go through a most interesting report with you. Thank you, through you, Your Worship. The recommendation is uh, that, um, sorry, I have printed council, but uh, West Gray Committee of the Whole receives the report regarding committees of council review and provides direction regarding amendments to the appointment bylaw. Is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Hamilton, are you moving the motion? Councillor Hamilton, I move the motion. Is there a seconder for this motion? I'm looking for hands up um, or, um, okay. Councillor Townsend, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Townsend, yes, I'm seconding the motion. Thank you very much. All right, with that, uh, Clerk Sharbeck, would you uh, take us through your report? Morning, everybody. Uh, this is the report we got partially through at our last meeting. 
And uh, there were a few recommendations made on the committees we did get through. So they've uh, gone to council in the last sort of committee of the whole minutes. Uh, there was an update and you'll see an update report in here about the insurance. I think that was a big piece moving forward. So I did have a conference call with um, Dave Eccles and Tony Camissimo <laughs> from Cowan Insurance and they provided a great deal of information. Um, so just before moving forward, I think protection for these volunteers that do so much work in our community was a really important piece for council. And it's difficult to move forward and decide just what's the best fit for these uh, volunteers or committees of council without the full picture. So I'd just like to skip ahead with, with council's permission to that insurance information. Um, okay, well, first let me uh, confirm that uh, council wishes to do that, Clerk Sherbeck, because it's not presented that way on the agenda. So with uh, protocol, I'm just looking for uh, council's consensus that they are fine to now move ahead to an item after uh, one was already called and where we already have a mover and a seconder on the, the motion before us. So with that, Clerk Sherbeck, if we skip on to item 3.1.2, which is the insurance information update for committees, how does that sit with the motion at hand that's already been presented on the first item on the agenda? Um, do you, Your Worship, we can go through the list of committees first in that initial report, if that's your wish, um, or I could do a, a just a brief overview of some key insurance pieces for councils or committees consideration as we go through the list and then stay on track with that first report that we're following up from if that suits sure so members of council we are proceeding if uh, if everyone is fine with the item at hand which is the committee committees of council review and as the clerk identified she will um, uh, identify any items where the insurance um, applies and then we'll deal with the uh, the full report following this. So is that clear with everyone? Okay, Clerk Sherbeck, thank you very much. Thank you to you, Your Worship. I did want the uh, committee to be aware that the information received from Frank Cow and Company, that first um, question, frequently asked question document about the committees of council, it would appear that from this list, the committees that council has appointed by bylaw are not necessarily covered by our insurance and they are not um, perhaps as protected as we thought we were just by that bylaw appointment. So if they're not reporting to council um, or if they have any uh, financial activity that is not going through the municipal um, finance department, if something happened, our insurer uh, would not step up and, and cover that, that liability. So I think that's important to know that keeping a committee, a committee of council, just to protect them with insurance is maybe not working out after all. And uh, it's really important that our volunteers are uh, protected the best we can so they can continue to serve the community. But this may, as a committee of council, may not be the way, and it's not providing the protection that perhaps we thought that appointment by law was. They have provided uh, details about facility user coverage, which I think uh, when we get into my next report, will provide a, a, a really good affordable option for these committees of council to perhaps continue their work with the protection of this facility user coverage, which would be like a rider on our insurance. It wouldn't change our premium, it would add about $1,500 to $2,000 off to the side. Um, and it would allow them to uh, perhaps enjoy things without the burden of reporting to council and doing the public agendas and minutes and uh, the meetings that the rules that have to be followed with the Municipal Act. So it might allow them greater freedom to do the things they really want to do and that they're really good at without those reporting burdens and still have that protection of liability insurance that 
um, larger groups, uh, Optimus, the Lions Club, they perhaps have insurance uh, through Lions Canada or something like that. Our smaller groups don't have that option. So this facility user solution is something we can come back to and talk about how that might work for our groups, if that works. So back to our list of committees. I think, um, I think we had gotten at our last meeting, I believe, just two Friends of Music in the Park Committee. Mm -hmm. And the recommendation at that time was to dissolve the committee and communicate some options to the committee or uh, to the group. So I haven't um, spoken to them yet because I didn't want to offer something that council wasn't, <laughs> wasn't approving and offering. So that's, uh, that's where we're at there. And moving on, the next is the Glen Alcohol Committee. And I would just um, recommend that when you're considering the committees, if you think about what our insurer will cover and will not, if they're not reporting to council regularly or providing good advice, and I know 2020 is a strange year, but historically, then um, you may wonder if they're actually being protected as well. And if, if they might uh, be better served with another kind of support from council. Thank so you. That's and Clerk Sherbeck, I do have a question uh, or a comment from Councillor Hutchinson. Yeah, Councillor Hutchinson here. So um, I would like to just take a few moments and go and talk about some of these committees. Um, I, I understand that the, the insurance is one animal, but the committee itself, the committee itself has a, has a purpose and a role uh, through council. And I think that's the, the first and utmost thing. The insurance is sort of secondary in terms of, okay, fine, we have this committee. Now, how do we insure them or make sure that they're covered to do the job? But I think the first priority is we formed this committee because we want, they, they have a role or purpose within our uh, organization. So let's move forward with the committee. So for example, the one they're talking about the, um, I have to flip back to my agenda, sorry here. Um, the one with the Friends of Music in the Park. We Page talked seven about that. Counselor. Sorry? Page seven, Councillor, um, just to provide some assistance. Yeah. Okay, it's 10, yeah, it's 10 on my computer, but seven, whatever, seven. Um, so we, we talked about that and we were going to, um, I think we passed a, a motion to um, um, remove them from our, our or I guess committee uh, designation uh, was and so I just when then we were going to contact them to uh, let them know that that was the direction we're going and we were going to talk about what what was their what was their role what did they feel their um, how they felt felt or fit under um, umbrella um, so I'm curious whether we contact them but secondly um, I'm concerned that um, we don't want to just you know say goodbye to some of these committees and uh, thank you very much and now they're done um so uh, my first question i guess is have we contacted this committee since we talked last time quick share back thank you worship um that's a very good points councillor hutchinson and the purpose of the committee review is to make sure that uh, council is um, not just aware of the committees, but that there's a clear understanding of the committee's mandate and that the committees are still, uh, their mandate is, is up to date and still serving the community. So moving forward with that, yes, we did. Um, at the last committee of the whole meeting, there was a resolution passed and it was approved by council to dissolve that music in the park, Friends of Music in the Park. And the direction was to contact them with some alternative ways that council could support them. But we didn't get through the list of committees or the options for other support. And I think the piece we were waiting on was the um, insurance information. So I haven't, I haven't spoken to them about the insurance options because it's really not an option until, um, until you tell me it's an option for them. Right? Oh, okay, okay, so I have, I have a couple of thoughts and suggestions on this one. Um, first of all, like they they are a, um, 
a different form of a committee, I guess, compared to some other committees. So my thought was, um, in order to, uh, I hope that they're going to continue and do what they've done in the past because we seem to have uh, success there. What about moving this committee uh, into uh, under Culture, Parks and Recreation Durham? Uh, because uh, it is culture and they become a subcommittee just like I'm going to talk today about trails maybe suggesting that trails could have subcommittees within our recreation um, area um, but my question is if they are a subcommittee like our recreation committees I, I presume are covered under our insurance but our subcommittees I'm not sure where we are with them so maybe you can respond to that thank you please go ahead uh, quick Sharpe. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, thank you, Council Hutchinson. The subcommittees have the same requirements under the legislation as the committees of council and uh, the same municipal act and meeting rules that council has. Uh, the same um, agenda notice and uh, public meetings, uh, minutes and reporting to council. They report directly to council. They don't report to um, Committee. Any uh, to committee? Yes, yeah. thank you. And uh, so, if they if their mandate is valid and council feels it's appropriate that they continue their work as a committee of council, that would be up to um, I guess committee of the whole to recommend to council that they continue in whatever way you feel serves uh, council the best, uh, but also protecting our volunteers the best we can. Friends of Music in the Park, I believe, take collections at their gatherings. Yes. Which are funds that are, are not um, put through our municipal books and Cowens will not insure them as a committee of council. Okay, so uh, some okay. public thoughts I, with that. Perhaps um, a facility user, uh, and a park is one of our facilities. Mm -hmm. So um, a formal booking of the park which our recreation supervisor has some great software now for booking that I think you're all on board with the purchase and moving forward with that. This is a, a time where it's gonna pay off for us because that booking software can help this group um, formally be in the booking system and protected as a facility user under that extra little piece of in insurance if it's council's wish to go that way. So that might be a really good option for them. And they wouldn't be, um, they would no longer have that um, onus to have formal meetings with agendas posted and minutes taken. So it, it might allow them a little bit more freedom in their operations. And I think the music in the park piece is something they obviously really enjoy doing and they do really well. So it lets them focus on what they do well and what they enjoy doing <laughs> without the onerous municipal act. Okay, so so you're suggesting not a subcommittee, but they would be a facility user. So um, then are they purchasing the insurance or is insurance coverage coming through us? Okay, that's a good question. And it's something to sort out. And I think perhaps, um, it's not a huge budget discussion because I haven't got uh, a, an exact amount from Cowens. It's based on, our premium would be based on user numbers. And 2020 is kind of a wonky year. So we've tried to provide as, as detailed uh, user numbers from 2019 as we could. But again, their booking software only captured a portion of that year. So we did a best guess and their best guess back for us was uh, I believe between $1,500 and $2,000 a year for all users. So this facility user solution, what they call it, would allow um, every booking form, there would be a line where they sign, they book the facility and they agree to pay um, a two or $3 insurance fee for that booking. So, or if I wanted to have um, a bridal shower for a friend, I could book a hall. And if I don't have insurance of my own and I don't want it on uh, added to my house insurance, I could for $3 have an insured event. 
um, if it was friends of music in the park who are doing some great work in our community, they could, uh, council could perhaps provide a donation or a community grant to a list of certain user groups that would waive that $3 fee. And it, it really is only, it's between two, three, four dollars that would sort of add up over the year and go towards the cost of the insurance. But if you think $2,000 over the year or two or three dollars an event or uh, rental, even if the rental is free, it's more the booking that the insurance goes with. So waiving that two or three dollar fee for these groups would be another way that council can show their support for the work they do in the community. That's just an option. And okay. um, the, the insurance is really meant for, um, it's not gonna cover rugby or, or licensed events like a stag and doe. No. It, it really is meant for just um, small groups or, or gatherings such as this in our parks or. Um, so so I think, yeah. So I think I think um, I think this might fit, fit the purpose of this group. I know when they originally came to us that that was part of their issue is that they're bringing in say fifty people and they were sort of saying you know are we insured you know we're sitting there in the parking lot are we insured right. so I think I think that may cover it. so you know obviously we need to reach out to them say we're making some changes um, the idea of them not having minutes and whatnot is great because that's not happening anyway so they're not really meeting as a formal group. Right. Um, but I, but I think it fits the purpose and, and therefore it, it takes it off our um, listing of committees. Um, but um, they do raise money, but that money pretty much all comes back into our commu community. They bought, okay. uh, they bought benches. They have donated some money now to an electrical box, which we're going to produce sometime. Um, and um, so, th you know, it's not like they're, they're using that money for other purposes. It's coming back into the community. So, so yeah, I think it's a great idea. I don't want to belabor the point here. I think it's a good way of, of uh, serving their purpose, but I would like just to have that discussion with them. Um, to make sure that they know what we're talking about here. Yes, and through you, Your Worship. Absolutely, please go ahead. Um, I, I would agree, it's really important to reach out to these community groups. And um, after our meeting today, if, um, if we know what direction we're going in, then I would, uh, I would feel that um, I have the authority to reach out and tell them that we're looking at some options and. And here's one. It's hard to offer something that council doesn't know about, right? <laughs> so, yep. um, I guess I, I do have one other point to go with that, if I may, uh, Mayor. Um, please go ahead. Just um, so the thing is, we have to be careful with is if we're going to subsidize their insurance coverage, uh, we're back to that whole um, gamut of uh, all these organizations that come to us for support. So, you know, if, if we cover them through insurance, we're going to give them a donation. That's a discussion we have to have. And I know. Yes. Um, it was all about this discussion. So we need to have that discussion. Maybe they end up paying the insurance and some, that comes out of their donations and then, then it's not on us. So that's just another thought regarding that. Thank you. And, and I would agree. And I think um, the list of user groups that council may wish to support through waiving the fee um, or through a community grant that would cover those costs is uh, perhaps a, a budget discussion. Um, who's on the, the waived list, how do you get on that list, and who's not, or, or how, it, how we, who are we asking for $3 from, basically. Mm -hmm. But um, just knowing that that's an option, I think figuring out who pays what will be easy to sort out afterwards and fair. Thank you. So I'm now going to move on to Councillor Townsend. Thank you for waiting. No problem, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, I love the insurance option. I think uh, a lot of these committees, including some of the hall ones and et cetera, they didn't want to participate in the same way we were asking them to, but they did it because of insurance. And so I think we'll take some pressure off them. And I'm glad with the discussion, the way it was going for Friends of the Park, I didn't want to turn them away or feel like, you know, they weren't being valued because they are. And mm -hmm. they serve a really great purpose. If you'd have been at the one uh, that they did uh, during COVID. I mean, it was amazing the turnout, and uh, the police were there to make sure that they didn't over overextend the number. There, they were walking around, 
and nobody got charged. So I'm pretty sure we're okay. But <laughs> the idea is, I think more would have come if they could have, you know, with the numbers. Yeah. And that's the kind of reason why they moved to that venue and therefore contributed towards the hydro. So, you know, they'll continue to do that and, and they'll continue to support us. So I'm glad that we could come up with a solution and take away the workload that they didn't want to do anyway. So exactly. you know, I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you. Well said, Councillor. And, and I, I echo what uh, both you and uh, Councillor Hutchinson uh, are saying that we've got some heritage committees, some longstanding um, hall committees uh, that have uh, exceptional respect in the community and um, certainly the um, friends of uh, friends of music in the park are all, as well are all contributing to our community in a most productive and and um, West Gray way you know real community way so um, I hear um, hear what you're saying members of, of council I'd like to go on to uh, an, another member of council if you are uh, done speaking Councillor Townsend yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Oh, you're quite welcome. Councillor Herger, good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, to the points that have already been brought forward, um, I do believe that this is probably more a fit for what the community members would like to do. Their level of participation on the municipal level seems to fit more under this um, insurance uh, facility user rider. Now, I think the uh, details will be very important and I'm sure that we have a communication uh, person working on this, but I think it's the storytelling of the community grant. We've talked about having um, an application set up. Uh, how could people participate in this, um, you know, in, in getting council support? I believe that we'll have to talk about insurance at this, you know, if it's two to three dollars per event, you know, how, how that works out, uh, Madam Clerk. But I think there's another part that we may be missing, that the municipality would be hosting booking and that our community user groups would be um, online booking. But I think that booking may have a software charge for each item that's booked. So there may be more that we're actually giving other than just two to three dollars Per event. And so I think that will come out in the storytelling about how we package the whole thing um, as council to say, we definitely appreciate volunteers. We as West Gray have the most volunteers that come forward for these activities that are just phenomenal. But getting the right insurance is key. And that's our role as council to ensure that we have the municipality covered. So I'm just curious about the booking software and how much that would cost per event or per booking. Um, let's just say it's the gazebo if we stick with the uh, friends in the park. Okay. How much would the booking software charge us for um, booking that gazebo? So Madam Clerk, I could go through you, but I yeah. also know that um, Supervisor Hewlett is prepared Thank to speak to it. So Supervisor Hewlett then. There we go. Um, so the booking software has a set fee that we pay per year based on the module that we have. And we pay that set fee regardless of how much we use the software. The only time that we incur a, what I'll call per event or per, per booking fee is if we have a payment go through the system. So um, for music in the park per se, we may not charge them for the park rental. So there would be no cost per rental for that. Addition. So that's our, yeah, thank you very much for that clarification, um, Mr. Hewlett. It's, it's that it's a fee-based. So then we would be foregoing fees for using certain areas maybe. Like, could we imagine some user group comes to us and asks for the hall rental um, any hall rental to be a free payment, you know, a free. So, I mean, these are the things as council will have to just consider when it comes to budget, they're already subsidized. What does that allow a user group? Maybe it's two free uses per year. You know, we'll, we'll get the right package, I'm sure, but this insurance component is essential to knowing how to proceed. And, and I, I think uh, Councillor Hutchison brought forward a lot of great points about the accounting of uh, minutes and so on. Let's let these groups do their, their good work and not overburden them with paperwork, which is our responsibility on the Municipal Act side. Thank you. Well, that's great. We're having a really good discussion on this. Um, and I think 
um, the common thread here is that we really recognize the importance of um, these smaller groups and the value that um, they ultimately contribute to our community. And we don't want to lose sight of that. And we also want to extend that respect back, back to them so that they understand that, uh, that we feel they are as important as, um, as, the, as the value to the community. It's most, most important. So there's options here, members of council. Um, and it, it's great that our, our clerk has, has um, researched a solution through insurance. We have options through bookings. We're moving things along really nicely this morning. And I do note that our clerk has something to say. Please go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank yes. you. Uh, just to your comment, uh, Councillor Herger, uh, you've raised a really excellent point about who gets what and how and what is the real cost because the real cost of waiving fees, it, not only do we lose the fees, but often for a hall rental, um, there, there's a hydro cost, there's staff opening and closing costs, there's emptying the garbage costs, there's cleaning the washroom costs, which maybe doesn't seem like a big deal, but they are definitely costs. And we're paying staff to do those things. So I would suggest um, that our, uh, sorry, lost the word community grant program incorporate an option for grants in kind so in lieu of cash perhaps the value of a hall rental is two hundred dollars so perhaps they apply for a grant in kind so they get the two hundred dollar rental free which would technically be a journal entry from our community grant account to the facility account for $200 so that our rec budget isn't always dinged when there's a fee waived. So the books work out, the, the, the cost of their actual grant is acknowledged that they're, they're not just getting a free hall rental, they're getting a $200 value item or whatever it is, I just made that number up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So if I bring back a community grant program that could incorporate not just cash, but in-kind donations, yeah. I think that would make it very clear, very transparent, what um, council is actually giving. And it would allow um, perhaps Cody's budget not to be the one that always takes the ding. <laughs> well, I think it's so does that yeah. help? Um, and hopefully by the end of the year, I can have a draft to you and then maybe tidy it up or finalize it through the budget discussion in another way that we can talk about how council funds that community grant program during the budget discussions. I think it's there. very progressive and it, it's something that um, this council has been um, thinking about mm -hmm. and, and talking about. So if we have the option and it could uh, very well have fits for, have a fit for other organizations in our community, agriculture, horticultural, yeah, you know, you never know until you look at the criteria and what it is we're trying to achieve. So with that, I think it's it's most positive and we're trying to do our very best for our community groups. Okay, Councillor Townsend, your hand is still up. Let me go to you and see if there's anything further you wish to say. Sorry, Madam Mayor, I should have taken it down earlier, sorry. Okay, <laughs> well, thank you for that. Uh, quick share of that. Let's, uh, let's proceed through the report. Yes, do you, Your Worship. Um, the committees are listed in the order they are on the appointment bylaws. So I don't know if it's Council's wish just to um, go through one at a time and decide is there is their mandate sound? Is it serving Council? So one of the things that I liked about the last time that um, uh, the last committee of the whole that we went through is we uh, had our discussion based on your report. Um, and like you said, and, and I did double check, that the um, the listing is as per our our um, committee appointment bylaw. Uh, I think that's a really smooth approach. We can follow through. We won't be jumping from place to place unless it necessitates that. And um, maybe we can uh, get through the rest of your report. So I would say yes to that, um, unless anybody else has a comment. And I do want to go to Councillor Hutchinson, please. Sorry, Councilor Hutchinson here. Yes, I agree. I think um, I think we've already had a good discussion on uh, Friends of Music in the Park. And I, I would like to see us go through the committees because 
as I read through these, I made notes and I would like to be able to discuss and, and get through this report and, and uh, move, move forward. So the next one, if, if I may, uh, are we okay to move on, is the Ganelg uh, Hall Committee. And I have a okay. question with that. Hang on one moment. Thank you very much. You're in the queue. And then I will go to Councillor Townsend for sure, who I see on, on my dashboard as well. Um, but Clerk Sherbeck, are we um, complete with uh, Friends of the, the um, Music in the Park at this point? Yes, Your Worship. Okay, thank you. And I just, uh, Councillor Townsend, was there anything further on um, Friends of the Music in the Park before we move on? Just not double check. Yeah, not specifically on Friends in the Park. I just okay. wanted to let the clerk know that because of the discussion that we started at our last meeting at uh, council, I wanted to cycle back to committee of adjustment and I just didn't want to lose that. Very good. Thank you for that. I'm going to note that as well. Got that here. All right, yeah, Councillor okay. Hutchinson, the virtual mic is yours. Okay, um, so with the Glenelg uh, Call Committee, I, I'm just curious where we are with that because this is a committee um, that uh, runs one of our facilities. So I just noticed in there, it says that reporting, uh, committee reports to council, 2020 minutes to council, none. Um, 2019 minutes to council, none. Uh, they have a seven member uh, public. I, I just feel that, and I don't know, maybe our clerk can talk about how the insurance works on this, but uh, I think if they're a committee uh, using a facility uh, or overseeing a facility, then we need, do need to have minutes. Um, I know they don't meet that often, but um, we are accountable for this building. So I would like to see them have minutes and maybe the clerk could speak to us about insurance and, and where we are with that. Certainly. Quick share back, please. Um, thank you, Your Worship. And Jai, it's a, another good point, Councillor Hutchinson. Without um, those agendas and minutes on file here, uh, no, Cowens won't be insuring them as a committee of council because they don't meet the definition. Um, that reporting to council isn't happening. When we looked at the minutes, um, or as they're reporting to council, 2020, I felt was a wonky year for most of our committees. It's not fair to say, it, it can't even get a picture of what really they do. So we took a glance back at 2019 as well, just to perhaps have a truer picture. And uh, they have uh, been asked for minutes and they've been asked for their agendas uh, prior to my arrival in Westgrave. And uh, I think staff was told, no, we don't do that. We never have. So this is um, perhaps a group that does really great work. And I think Glen the Glenelg Hall is an important piece of um, the the feel of the community, mm -hmm. of that neighborhood. It's very much a grounding piece for that area. Um, however, the, the reporting to council piece, the minute taking is not um, perhaps what they're keen on doing. They'd like to keep their hall, the community hall open and operating, but it, it's, um, it might be less burdensome for them if they didn't have the reporting requirements of the Municipal Act um, to allow them um, to volunteer and help with that hall as a, a perhaps a volunteer group or a um, Friends of the Glen Elk Hall group. I'm not sure what, but yeah, there's definitely an important role for them. I just don't know if it fits in the council committees. So um, I'm just wondering, uh, I know Councillor Hutchinson, you still have the mic, but Clerk Sherbeck, on the Friends of the Glen Elk Hall, what would that look like? Um, I, I mean, we've got, um, as I say the question, I want to mention something a bit further, but we have the Glen Elk Hall, we have Lamb Lash Hall, we have Stoddard Hall. And at the beginning of our discussion, I had said that there are some committees that are, are rich in history and right. um, that are really an important, part of the fabric of our community, full West Gray, but also within their individual communities. Those halls are public assets. Um, those are our community halls. And I'm just wondering, is there a way if um, to find a common solution mm -hmm. where these individuals that volunteer their time very much respect those community halls that they are, are serving and uh, their community? How is it that we can um, continue the relationship with them with respect 
and understand that they're most valued in the community for the work that they're doing. Does the Friends of the Glen Elk Hall Committee, does the Friends of the Stoddard Hall Committee, and also Friends of the Lamlash Hall Committee provide a solution that Council could consider sitting here as Committee of the Whole? Thank you, Your Worship. That's a, a good question. It's a really big question. <laughs> um, I, uh, arriving in the midst of COVID, I haven't had the opportunity to meet a lot of their volunteers in person yet. Um, I think each of these whole committees operate slightly differently. And um, I just, sorry, just went out do the bookings. Uh, yeah. uh, I'll get that answer I'll through. I'll come back to that. Actually. Okay. Uh, they each operate just slightly differently. Mm -hmm. I think it's important that the bookings for municipal facilities go through our new booking software, and that allows for the insurance for our facility to happen. And for any user groups that are renting it may benefit if we go with the facility user insurance, whether that be a family um, reunion or, or whatever it is. Um, I think it's really important to have the conversation with each whole committee right. about um, what, what do they see their role as? Because I'm not sure I understand how they see their role, but that's the piece that matters. So I, I feel quite presumptuous suggesting that, um, suggesting a role for them when I'm not sure what, what their historical role is and what matters to them most. Excellent. Because it, they're yeah. really important, and I uh, perhaps it's a little bit dif different for each one mm -hmm. how they continue operating. But I think it's important to have that conversation, to reach out to them, and to be able to um, fully and honestly say that uh, council respects you and wants to honor you in the work you do in our community. And how do we do that moving forward um, and remove the the burdens that come with being a committee of council? and support you in the work you do. So I, I, I think it's driven by them. Great. And I am seeing across uh, my dashboard here that I'm getting nods, I'm getting thumbs up, uh, smiles. Uh, so thank you for that comment. Uh, Councillor Hutchinson, please. Yeah, so if I can just add to that a little bit. Um, I, um, I know the um, Bentic uh, Committee, I think is a little more active than the Gunnell Call Committee for sure. Um, I do think it's important because these are our facilities. Like every year we talk about, okay, what does this hall need? If we're going to keep it open, it needs some, needs some work and so on. So I think there's, there's merit for having at least an annual meeting at the hall to, to bring forward, okay, what are some of the things that need done here? Now I know Gunnell, uh, Bill Timmons is good to sort of keep an eye on mm -hmm. the building and he does a lot of work uh, on the building sort of thing. Um, so, you know, the, the, he's, he's done well that way, but I, I do think, whether we make them a committee of council or however we do that, I do think that it's important at least to have a, an annual meeting to talk about the hall, the rentals, what it needs, if it's still viable. You know, like I know when you start to talk about closing some of them, those halls, people come out of the woodwork, but meanwhile, are they being used? You know, so that's that's the discussion that we have to keep in the back of our mind. I can speak from the Southern Hall Committee experience because I've been on that now. Uh, for a bit. Um, it's a it's a group. They have a very active committee, um, local group, sort of focusing on uh, the Priceful uh, community, which is on our on our border. Um, the hall it gets used a bit, not as much as they'd like to. Um, uh, we su subsidize that uh, hall. So along with Great Highlands, it's a combined board. Um, they do not have a counselor on that board now. They used to have, but um, I, when I was first on there, they did. And now they don't. So I'm I'm representing West Gray, but they don't really have a Gray Highlands representative rep, representative at the meeting. They have an, uh, a person oversees all of their halls. It's sort of a different different setup. Um, and they meet, uh, I'd say, biannually, um, and um, it works. So uh, and they talk about the hall and what it needs and the use and so on. So I do think that we need to have some kind of accountability. And I think it's nothing else. It's a uh, communication reaching out to the community to say, Hey, you know, we, we want to hear what's going on and we want to know what's with the hall and, and uh, how things are going. Thank you. I think that that's a really great idea. Um, we certainly had um, our outreach discussions. If you remember 
a year ago at this time, we were out in right. every community and, and I um, uh, will be speaking to council about um, having that uh, that done again, but at the appropriate time and, and uh, what does that mean through COVID or do we wait? Um, anyway, I'll just mm -hmm. park that uh, particular discussion. But in terms of the, um, the outreach discussion that we had at Lamlash Hall, members of uh, the Lamlash Hall committee were present and most passionate discussion about um, the importance of Lamb Lash Hall. We learned, we all learned uh, a lot and had that connection, that um, that personal connection with the, those community members. And I think that's really important. So I hear exactly what you're saying, uh, Councillor Hutchinson. I, I see other members of council um, that are appear to be most intrigued about that solution. An annual meeting with our committees, most important. Um, and I do like the connection through Stoddard Hall. And, um, you know, I, I agree, um, knowing each of these um, uh, groups and uh, the halls, they're most unique. They're as unique as, their, um, as those community halls. And uh, those are public assets. I also wanna say we have not had discussion about closure of those most valuable heritage halls. So uh, for those citizens that are listening in, but um, I understand fully your, um, your discussion there, Councillor Hutchinson. I have three other members of, um, Council listed to speak. Councillor Hutchinson, was there anything further or could I perhaps loop, loop back to you later? Um, no, I'm good for now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, with that, I just want to mention Councillor Townsend, Councillor Herger, and Councillor Hamilton are in the queue. So please go ahead, Councillor Townsend. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, with these buildings, to me, they're almost an extension of our facilities area in the sense that they do the cleaning, they do some, some minor maintenance, they don't do the major stuff. And they do come to council in a roundabout way because we do get told what needs are there and, and during budget time, we go through the, the discussion of what is there. So we don't have a formal process, but the process is there and happening. So, you know, I support what Councillor Hutchinson is saying. And I also believe that these, these people, it keeps them vibrant. It's not just a matter of the hall. It keeps the community vibrant. It keeps the people busy. And that's what they enjoy doing. And they've done it for years. So it's this council, I think, is being more responsible in the sense of bringing structure and sort of making sure that they are protected as we think they are. And hence the insurance review and, and feedback, which is great. So if we're still going to protect them and we still want them, and, and I think we do, then we had to find a solution around it. And we need to acknowledge that in many ways, that group is operating as an operational group, not as an advisory group. The advisory, I think, is secondary. Mm -hmm. You know, they notice things rather than they intentionally sit there and they don't call up uh, the director of infrastructure and say, by the way, there's a problem with this hall, right, kind of thing. It's not that formal they do, and maybe it should be. You know, maybe that's one way of, of increasing the link as well. If they do something, you don't have to come to council. You can do it through infrastructure. So just an expansion on what um, Councillor Hutchison was ex explaining or suggesting uh, as how we get feedback from that group on an ongoing basis. And uh, I would support at least one meeting a year uh, to make sure that that happens if it isn't happening throughout the year on a regular basis. Great. Thank you. Well, well said, Councillor. And uh, by way of an example, when we did have that outreach at, I'll, I'll utilize Lamlash uh, for my example, uh, there was some discussion with regard to, um, I think the, um, the hydro, the electricity in the building. And um, our director of infrastructure and public works was able to have that discussion with uh, members of Lamlash Hall committee. And um, we were able to uh, resolve or have the information that they needed. I saw that as, a most positive outcome to, to that particular meeting as well. So uh, well said, anything further, Councillor Townsend? Uh, there was also discussion yeah. on one of the halls about washrooms too. So it wasn't, it, it wasn't good. just, you know, the one item, there was more yeah. there. And so if we open that avenue was my point, that's how we'll get that feedback and we'll get it back earlier, uh, maybe more timely if there's accessibility issues and that's why people aren't using it, then that's how that comes out if it's not being done by our infrastructure folks, so. Perfect. That's great. Yep, well, thank it. you for that count. Thank you. Councillor Herger, please. Yes, just to the uh, continuation of uh, Councillor Townsend there, 
the needs of the halls. I think that's the important part. Um, our resources for each hall has changed. Our resources at West Gray have changed. Our staffing changes, our booking modules have changed. We have some different uh, abilities than we did, let's say two years ago. And I think the needs of the hall and the residents around, uh, you know, the needs of the community, it's very important to at minimum have a an annual discussion. Um, I think that there is room for um, asset management uh, human resource at West Gray, and that may change the requirements of individual hall committees as well. So um, we have more resources at West Gray than we did two years ago or four years ago. And I think that, you know, the booking software just being an example is a way that now we can book online. And then we also can arrange the cleaning of the hall based on the booking. So, I mean, different, um, resources that are available now than we had years past. So I think as our, our human resources at West Gray change, these committees could change as well. Um, at minimum though, I do agree with the annual discussion about the needs of the hall and the needs of the community. That's all for now, thank you. Thank you very much, well said. Um, Councillor Hamilton, please. Thank you, Mayor Robinson and thanks for Council to the discussion, I feel a lot of consensus around the table and we're all very um, mindful of how much we appreciate our volunteers, want to support our volunteers and we're looking for the best path to do that. Um, and I, that's what I hear we're all moving towards. So I'm feeling really encouraged by our conversation. Right. And I wanted to circle back to Clerk Sharback's comment about um, wanting to reach out to the hall committees and seek their feedback. I think that's fantastic. And for me, that is a piece that's missing from our conversation. And I wanted to bring that forward today was um, engaging our current community, uh, or our committee members, engaging them in this conversation before um, adopting um, uh, more decision-making. So having that input as part um, before we finalize our decision-making. Um, and so I would take Clerk Charbeck's idea and extend that to all of our committee members and ask them what's working well, what are, what's some of your feedback, what are some concerns you have. Here's the direction um, Council is pointing in, here's some of the changes that we're proposing and why. Um, and here's some things that still have to be discussed, like community grants, that's a discussion that's coming. We don't have all the details sorted out, but here's the direction we're going in. What do you think about this direction as well? Um, so I think we can get a lot of work done in this conversation today, um, but I would be looking for that input before we um, finalize our recommendations. And whether that be um, having, a, it could be twofold. It could be a survey. It could be um, also a, a, a open public meeting as well. But I think we'd have more, um, honest, open feedback perhaps too through the survey method as well, or maybe we need both, but that's something I would like to build on what Clerk Sharback has mentioned um, as we gather the information and, and work towards making, um, making our volunteers feel valued and giving them the tools they need to continue doing the work that they're doing. It's really important. So yeah. I'm feeling really encouraged by the conversation. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. I too. I'm, I'm quite enjoying this conversation and what well, committees is um, used to be my wheelhouse back in the day and I, I thoroughly enjoying this. Um, and, and the feedback um, piece is really important, Councillor Hamilton. And, and um, I, you know, your, your modes of communication that you're um, suggesting are really great, but also the one-on-one. -on -one. I think um, there may be an opportunity with some of the committees uh, and I'm gonna suggest even the, um, the small hall committees that a one-on-one -on -one conversation, uh, whether that I'm suggesting perhaps through, perhaps through the clerk's office, a telephone or a Zoom um, may work as, as effective. So uh, I know our a clerk and um, assistant clerk, or shall I say administrative assistant are most um, apt for communication. So I look forward to that information. Should that be the, the route? I mean, we may come up with another outreach venue as well. Um, Councillor Hamilton, anything further before I go to Clerk Sharback? Um, no, thank you. I do. Um, I would appreciate Clerk Sharback's uh, feedback on how we could engage our community volunteers for their feedback. Thank you. 
Thank you. And that feedback from our clerk is coming right now. <laughs> clerk Sherbeck. Thank you, Your Worship. And uh, thank you, Councillor Hamilton, for sort of moving this um, along. I guess what I'd, I'd like to consider is getting through this list of committees with um, an understanding of there's going to be um, perhaps two groups or perhaps three groups. One is definitely keep, we need them. And they are um, serving an important mandate and they meet all the qualifications um, of a committee of council. The middle group is we need to reach out and see what's happening with this group and if they, uh, what their goals are and if we could better serve them in another way. So perhaps not dissolve them today, but put them on a, um, a definitely, these are the first groups that we need to reach out and talk to and bring those um, conversation, uh, that input back to council. And the third group is perhaps groups that have met their mandate and they're coming to a natural end. And I don't know if there are any that meet that, but hopefully by the end of the day, um, I have the information to know definite stays. We need to reach out and have a conversation and definitely a dissolved committee. So I can bring that information back before council redoes an appointment bylaw. Is that, am I understanding Councilor Hamilton where you, I guess we need a first step. I need some action and I need the approval to go ahead. But which groups am I calling is what I know to say, hey, I, I think council has some better options for you. That's what I'd like a, a, out of this. Well, I think I like the, um, your suggestion of having the categories of uh, committees as we move through and then identifying like the Glen Owl Call uh, Committee. Um, to me, that, uh, that as, as a call is a call and, and a report back, that's a natural. Um, and we're also identifying that we, you know, we've, um, we like the idea of an annual meeting, but we want um, feedback from, from the committees. And, uh, you know, I think that's, as we move through each of these, um, Clerk Sharbeck, if you could provide perhaps some suggestion along the right. way. And I know our council, um, sitting as committee will also provide that uh, feedback. Councillor Hamilton, please. Thank you, Clerk Sharbach. I think that makes a lot of sense, the way your, your thought process. I, in addition to that, I think there's value in reaching out to all of our current committee members, um, yeah. even those committees that we have identified uh, uh, fit that uh, um, committee of council model well. I still wanna reach out to them and say, what's working? What's not working? What are some questions you have? Um, do you have any concerns? So that, because I think we're also working on, um, as we've talked about, we'd like to provide some training in the new year. Hey, we have a new way of getting your ideas to council and here's yes. how. Like, that's mm -hmm. been a great, we wanna communicate those things. Hey, we're working on our community grants. Um, so I, I'd like to show them the work that we've done so far. And we appreciate and value your input as committee members because I know their experience of being on a committee is very different than mine as a counselor. And I wouldn't want to assume what that experience is. Um, so if that could be in addition to what you've just raised, I think it would be valuable feedback for, for council. Yes, and through your worship, yep. I, I think uh, guaranteed every committee um, mm -hmm. needs that communication. I guess I, I need to, I need the categories to know what conversation I'm having with right. them <laughs> when I reach okay. out to them. So quick, but, Sherbert, can you just go through the categories yeah. again? Um, I would, I would say that the first category is committees that have a solid mandate. Um, they're providing good advice and good information and research for council. And they meet the qualifications or the criteria to be considered um, and protected as a committee of council. The middle category, I would say, are groups that might um, be better served and serve the, be able to serve the community the way they want to better in another format, uh, whether it's a community group or what exactly they need and how council can support them with, with those goals um, and their service to the community. And the third group, maybe committees that have achieved their mandate 
and uh, their work is done. <laughs> yep. So I don't know if there's too many of those, but I will definitely be having a conversation. And as we had talked uh, in different um, meetings, I'm not sure of dates, but we've had a little bit of snippets of conversation about um, training for chairs and secretaries mm -hmm. of committees, which is important. You can't ask them to do what they've perhaps never been trained to do. Right. So that support is from the clerk's office. Um, some training opportunities that we have, and uh, we have a number of HR download training modules that they can do at, at no cost. And we do have a commitment to an annual anti-racism, inclusivity um, type of training. So as we move forward, these communication pieces, whether they're here to stay for some time or we're finding another model or they're wrapping it up. Yes, they all need a conversation. I just need to know which type of conversation. Right, okay, this is perfect. And I, and I really appreciate we're one hour into our meeting. Uh, we're making great progress in, in terms of how we're, we're addressing uh, the committees. And um, I'm wondering if at this stage, um, we can move on to Economic Development Advisory Committee. But before I do that, I just want to check with Councillor Hutchinson. Yeah, before we leave this, I just want to, I just want to make a mention about the Stoddard Hall because if you want particulars or know where to start, I have a suggestion. Um, in front of me, I have bylaw number 11 2015 And that's the bylaw that uh, forms agreement between us and Gray Highlands for funding on Stothard Hall. And as I mentioned earlier, um, and I'm not sure if it's gone anywhere yet, but I have a suggestion, uh, that this, this agreement ended on December 31st, 2019. Um, but as far as I know, the, uh, we carry on as, as, if, if, as in the past. So my suggestion is I would like to um, have our clerk um, meet with um, the clerk of Gray Highlands to renew this policy. And I would like maybe at that time, if um, myself and um, a couple of the chairs and vice chairs from that committee could have a meeting, we could talk about where we're at and where we're going. And one of the issues that they have, and I think it's gonna be the same issue we're gonna have a discussion about with other halls is accessibility. Stothard Hall needs a fair bit of money put into it to become accessible because it's a, a two-story building uh, and they aren't accessible to the upper story and their washrooms are not accessible. So um, they need to have a good discussion. We need to have a good discussion about that, where we're going, because they may be, we may be involved in funding for that project. So, uh, and that's something maybe a clerk would want to uh, have in a discussion with the other committees uh, about accessibility and are those halls accessible? Um, so um, okay. if I could leave that with the clerk, um, that uh, bylaw number 11, 2015, she wants to take a look at that and maybe between her and I, we can maybe try to organize somewhat of a meeting and then we can sort of combine getting this off the table, but also having that discussion about the committee and where we are and where, where, where we're going forward. Clerk Sharbeck, does that seem uh, reasonable and, and the pathway forward uh, dealing with uh, Stoddard Hall? Uh, yes, it does. And I think, uh, I suspect Stoddard Hall will fall into um, the same sort of category mm -hmm. as Glen Elk Hall and Lamlash Hall, mm -hmm. that they're a call and sort out how do we best go forward with this group and this facility. So definitely, and thanks for the um, agreement heads up there, Councillor Hutchinson. I will look into that and reach out to the Grey Highlands clerk and whether uh, we can sort out, um, I'm not sure if, if these groups, if we can sort out Zoom meetings with uh, the chair or the council rep as well, and, or if there's an opportunity to meet in person in the near future with social distancing, of course. Um, those are the details we can sort out, so I'll definitely reach out to you for that, Council Hutchinson. Thank you. And that sounds like a fun project, by the way. <laughs> I have to tell you, that sounds really great. And members of uh, Council Sedina's committee, um, I just wanna say thank you very much for your your discussion on our heritage committees, uh, Lamlash Hall, Glen Elk Hall, Stoddard Hall, um, those, uh, those committees and, and the um, community volunteers that serve on it have, um, have done a lot of work uh, on those cherished halls. And uh, just thank you very much for, for the respect and, and the dialogue um, in uh, retaining those committees and uh, just, just showing the value or 
retaining in terms of putting a pathway forward for the best possible solution for them. So great discussion. Um, I think right now, this is another really good committee um, as they all are, but uh, this is interesting. Uh, the West Gray Economic Development Committee, and then also as a subcommittee, I'm just uh, turning the page here. Another most interesting um, subcommittee is the West Gray Commercial Beautification Committee. So uh, let's get started on that discussion. Clerk Sherback, please. Thank you. The West Gray Economic Development Advisory Committee and its subcommittee, the Commercial Beautification Committee are both discretionary committees. They're at the uh, discretion of council. Um, my understanding and what I've seen from their minutes and uh, the activities they've undertaken is that even throughout COVID, they're making great efforts to serve council and to provide advice to council. So is it council's will to just leave this and move on as a, a keeper as it is? So I'm gonna, uh, thank you for that. I am gonna go to uh, the, the members um, that serve on this. But I, I do want to say we've got some really great tangibles um, mm -hmm. that I've observed coming out of Economic Development Committee. We have uh, the CIP, we and which is on on the home stretch, if I can describe it that way. We have um, the support through resilience uh, through COVID with with this committee. Um, we also have the um, the red funding, so that's looking at a different type of model of uh, entrepreneurship, which is um, social enterprise. And, um, you know, those are just to name a few. I think there's also some discussion in terms of uh, perhaps starting an economic development strategy, uh, which again, tangibles, you're, you're just checking off all the boxes for success for our community. Um, so I just wanted to obviously do a shout out in that regard um, and acknowledge uh, the work that's being done. But I wonder if I could go to Deputy Mayor Hutchinson uh, if he has a comment, I do want to go to Councillor Townsend and Councillor Hutchinson, if they could just provide a comment, not all are on, on the board, but I, I'm just looking for comments because you serve on this committee. And I also want to acknowledge that Councillor Hergert is on the dashboard for discussion. Uh, Deputy Mayor, any um, um, quick comments? You could circle back to me, I'm just finishing a cough here, Mayor Robinson. Absolutely, Councillor Townsend then. Thank you very much, it's Councillor Townsend. Um, yeah, as a member of the committee, I wasn't quite sure how the beautification fits into the economic development pers uh, perspective directly. Um, obviously, what they do is amazing, and some of the work they've been doing in the last few weeks as well, you can see and you understand the value. So I, I don't, um, don't dispute the value or the quality of their work um, in any way, shape, or form, and we'll start with that comment. Um, mm -hmm. As far as where they fit, if economic development comes up with a strategic plan, which is one of the next um, activities that we're going to undertake, that's going to sort of generate a whole bunch of activity. And I, I wouldn't expect that that would all be managed by economic development. I'd be very interested in hearing from our CIO because she is the um, staff, if you will, um, rep on that uh, committee directly because of uh, its stature and it fits perfectly. Um, but I wouldn't expect economic development to then manage what goes forward. And yet that seems to be the relationship, even though that committee doesn't really provide a lot of guidance um, to that committee. Mm -hmm. They're very self-sufficient and they do a great job without us putting our fingers in the pie, so to speak. So mm -hmm. I, I, would, um, I would ask the CAO to comment on that as well. Yeah, um, before, um, as uh, the CAO is getting ready to speak, I do want to say that with regard to, uh, you're speaking of the West Gray um, Commercial Beautification Committee, is that correct, Councillor Townsend? That's correct. That's correct. Okay, with that, I, I um, appreciate the, um, the work that they're doing um, in, in each of our, our small communities in terms of making, um, making our communities beautiful, whether it's through bridge baskets, um, um, evergreen on our bridges, sorry, hanging baskets or um, in the past bridge baskets or now greenery on our bridges. And, uh, you know, just an overall sense of community in, in each of our, our smaller communities. One thing that I, I do note is I think there needs to be a communication um, process so that um, the Commercial Beautification Committee is apprised of 
of um, information so that uh, there's clear information that, um, that they're aware of, whether it is um, lights, uh, community uh, Christmas lights being hung, or uh, you know the upcoming um, uh, tree lighting, et cetera. Just that we need to have that major connect so that the information is correct and that they're informed and that linkage back to economic development in any of the programs, which I was remiss. There was another really great program and that was the banner program. So I know that was homegrown, homegrown out of economic development committee. Um, and then is there a connection with uh, the CBC on that? Okay, I think that's enough time uh, for me chatting. Uh, Madam CIO, are you ready to respond to Councillor Townsend's inquiry? Yes, thank, thank you. Good morning. I'm good now. Okay, thank you very much. And three, Madam Mayor. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the original vision for the, the CBC, Commercial Beautification Committee, was that they were more of a uh, working group that would actually deliver on the um, priorities that they set for beautification of the urban centers. Uh, aligning them with economic development was primarily because we are talking about our business core areas of West Gray. And um, that, was, that was the best fit at the time when these committees were, were adjusted a few years ago. Uh, you're right, Councillor Townsend, they are a, a very self-sufficient group. They continue to, um, to plan and to deliver on, on their mandate. Um, so to say that they're a subcommittee of economic development, that's something that we could actually explore. Um, there is no council appointee on this committee primarily because they were connected to economic development and the reporting through, um, for example, the, the budget. This committee does not spend the budget. They, they make the recommendation on the things that we need to purchase. For example, when the flower program was first developed uh, two years ago, that, that did come to economic development. It was approved through council and now it's just, it's just, it just keeps rolling through um, each season. There are a few things that this committee is looking at and, and as we prepare for 2021 and those recommendations would come to the Economic Development Committee for, uh, to um, then flow through to council. So there is a connect on occasion, but the lion's share of their work is independent of what economic development as a strategic committee is working toward. Excuse me, Mayor Robinson, you're- um, Thank you, um, thank not. you very much. Thank you. <laughs> so, thank you. Um, again, uh, thank you, um, CIO Johnson for that comment. And before I go to you, Councillor Townsend, I, I just want to double check on something that um, the um, CBC definitely does all of the beautification in our communities and certainly there's a budget assigned. Um, how does that impact when um, the ordering of flowers may need to be uh, addressed in, um, in November, or shall I say, in advance of the budget being approved and the connection with um, the Economic Development Committee's budget. I wonder before I go back to Councillor Townsend, is that something that uh, the CBC has addressed in, in their most recent meetings and how's that being achieved through our entire process um, to get the results that, that um, the CBC are looking for, but also as a council we're looking for. Madam CAO? Uh, thank you for the question, Madam Mayor. And in fact, we did address that at our last meeting. A staff report is coming forward to uh, one of the December council meetings to request that the funds be approved so that we can get that order for flowers in. It is it is a difficulty with timing. Um, you know, even even though we have the goal of passing our budget a little earlier than previous years, the flower order should be placed ideally in January because there's going to be um, it's going to be an interesting year for supplies. So that so the committee has asked for that um, to come forward and staff working on that report. That's great, thank you. And I was aware that um, there was a, a pressing need to have the order in, and uh, I appreciate the dialogue that we had, and that was uh, followed through um, as it was um, something the CBC were were most interested in. Councillor Townsend, please. Uh, thank you, Madam CAO, for your clarification. And I'll state again: I don't object to where they are, but when we're reviewing the committees, it's worth at least going back, revisiting, making sure they're in the right spot. And if they're not, we adjust accordingly. But uh, as you say, things are working fine. They are um, independently run and they do come back to uh, economic development um, more recently because that 
there was a distinct um, remiss and, and gap there that wasn't happening. And now that's been addressed as well. So I think we're okay to go forward, but I just wanted to make sure we we're all on the, the same side of that uh, question. Thank you. Thank you. And that's all uh, matter. Yep. Thank you. Um, I'd like to go to Councillor Hutchinson, who also serves on this committee. Loop back to Deputy Mayor um, Hutchinson, and then there's uh, Councillor Hergert, then Councillor Shea. Councillor Hutchinson, please. Yeah, um, Councillor Hutchinson, I, I do. Um, I do think the Economic Development Committee is a very valuable committee. Uh, I know that um, there's some frustration, I think, on the committee in that way. They feel they don't get as much accomplished as we'd like to accomplish. Um, the CIP, for example, is something that we've been working on and working on. And finally, we're going to get to the end of that uh, and we're going to start pushing that out. But it's taken a long time to get there. And um, I'm not blaming anybody for that, but it just seems like um, I know some people feel that, you know, why do we have this committee if we aren't really accomplishing anything? And, and so that's always been, and that's been there long before this council, uh, that uh, this, this uh, it just seems to be that, the question. Anyways, I, I do think their, their work is very valuable. I think there's a lot of great ideas come out of this committee. We have a good committee. Um, with, as far as the CBC goes, I, I compliment the, the group on what they do. I, I do like to see the garlands on the bridges this year. That's great. Um, the downtown cores, you know, we, we worked with the lights with the BIA and the, and, and the different uh, communities to get new lights. So I think the CBC is, is a very valuable organization or, or committee, but I, I do sort of feel that they don't really fit under economic development yet yeah, part of it. But I do think that there's a, there's a need for a parks committee or a parks uh, group. Uh, that can not only look at, uh, you know, and the CBC maybe being an umbrella of that group, uh, looking at all our other parks. Um, it, right now they're under public public works, but how do we actually move things along when we want to do some work on that? So I think there's a there's a gap there, um, and CBC has their mandate and what they're doing is great. But I think if we had an overseeing parks group uh, committee like we used to have, that maybe we could accomplish even more. So um, I think that's all I have to say about that at this point. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to circle back to Deputy Mayor Hutchinson now, who also is the um, representative on the West Gray Economic Development Advisory Committee. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. Uh, yeah, I think both, um, both the CBC and the Economic Development, I think they're doing great work. Uh, like Councillor Hutchinson said, uh, the CIP, that was a huge undertaking, though. And there was a lot of moving parts there that we had to deal with. So that took a uh, uh, deputy mayor. Uh, yes. We're losing your audio. I wonder I don't know why that would be. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Thank Is you. Is that better? I don't. There. Anyways, both, I think the economic development and the um, CBC are, are, are very, very, but I actually think they fit well together. I'd like to see maybe the CBC actually, maybe the chair or a couple of the members actually attend maybe once or twice a year into the economic development so we can find out a little more up to date what their actual needs would be or you know maybe there's a lot of things that we can work on together and um, you know again to answer the the CIP that was a huge job and that took uh, probably probably took us better part of six months to, to get through that so I, I think we've done a good thing. Now we've got some ideas. We just got to execute our plan in 2021 and make one or two of these items actually come to tuition. Thank you. Great. And before I go to Councillor Hergert, it sounds like what I'm hearing so far is um, uh, in the category of number one, where the committee has a solid mandate. Um, there's good connection with uh, uh, there was a criteria for um, information um, needed through council as an advisory level and that it meets the criteria. So I'm looking to the clerk who's looking at our CAO right now uh, for that um, response. Um, and then also the CBC is uh, valid. Does it fit under uh, as a subcommittee to economic development committee? Maybe that's a larger discussion. But before I go to Councillor Hergert, um, Madam um, Clerk, would you be able to respond to my statement. <laughs> sure, thank you. Yeah. Through you, Your Worship. What I'm uh, hearing is that economic development and uh, the CBC are both keepers. Okay. And they're uh, valued, they're doing good work and they are uh, serving council well. 
the positioning or perhaps CBC has um, evolved a little bit. And mm -hmm. as they're evolving and their role is perhaps becoming a bit bigger in the community, it might be an opportunity um, once we get through the uh, keep, sort out or dissolve that uh, when we revise the bylaws after we gather the information from our, our groups, this might be one that uh, could fit well with our parks committee or perhaps be sorted into another category or join forces with another team that we have in here. I'm not sure, but what I'm gathering is they're definitely keepers. So for right now, if I can keep them where they're at and we'll maybe um, fine tune that when we get a, uh, perhaps the bylaw cleaned up a little bit more Great. And, and just whatever we come up with at the end of this um, and our new appointment bylaw moving forward, nothing's got written in stone. These things are evolving just as our community is changing and our community needs to change. So I think um, it's a living document and we revisit it when we need to. And I really so, like the positioning of that. It is a living document and, and this council is very um, acutely listening to the community and, and our, our committee members or subcommittee members. I want to go to, uh, to CAO Johnson who has her hand up, but I'm going to pose a question to you. There was an email from a CBC committee member with regard to um, the minutes on the uh, okay, Madam uh, Clerk, there was an email from a CBC uh, committee member that was seeking clarification with respect to the minutes. So I wonder if you could address that now before I go to Kelsey Herger. Yes, thanks for that reminder. I meant to mention that to the Committee of the Whole. What I've got in my report is a really fat typo that lasts quite a few lines. So I've stated under the CBC committee that the committee report the 2020 minutes to council, I have the January 30th, 2020 minutes, which at the time I wrote the report, that was the only ones I had received. I think they were um, the same day as we met having their meeting. Mm -hmm. At any rate, um, the other listing of minutes under that 2020 minutes to council, is somehow um, a reprint of the 2019 minutes and it's there in error. Mm -hmm. So um, the committee is reporting to council that January meeting was the only one um, that we had received minutes of, but I know since then we've certainly received uh, September minutes and possibly October as well. Yes, Lindsay's telling me October as well. So it, it, they're coming, it's just a, a picture, uh, a point in time. And I apologize for the 2019 listing in there. I, I, it did uh, cause a bit of confusion. So for the committee member that uh, brought that to our attention, thank you for that. Okay, well, thank you, Clerk Shepard. Is there any means by which the report could be addressed or does this get uh, somehow notified in our minutes that um, about the, um, just that there is an um, amendment to the minutes or how, how do we need to acknowledge that? Or, or is there anything further? that needs to be done at this point. Um, to your worship, I, I think uh, we just need to clarify that uh, the 2019 minutes shouldn't have been listed under 2020 as well. Okay. So, um, so no, it, it, as long as there, there's the confusion is cleared up, I guess is the point. Thank you, thank you for that. And that just speaks to um, citizen input or community um, committee input. Councillor Herger, we've got Councillor Shea and then Councillor Hamilton. Councilor Herger, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, I really appreciate Councillor Hutchison's frankness regarding the frustration that some individuals on this committee feel about their mandate, about what the entirety of their mandate is, and, and really the duration that it takes to get through that CIP. Now, the CIP has been ongoing not just for six months, this is a, a well-known strategy in Gray County that the county had to approve first and now West Gray is getting to their um, lower tier uh, CIP. However, there is a lot of frustration on that uh, committee that I've heard from individuals that are just 
the the process is drug out so long there there's community members business owners that are asking when does this start um we definitely need to have a lot more communication what is the hold up for the cip what are the challenges we're still experiencing i mean this is really west gray's messaging out so the frustration that i'm hearing from community members and business owners about when does this program actually start you know it, it's nice to say it's coming it's coming it's coming we've got a staff member it's coming it's coming but it's really our communication out so um obviously economic development is a key committee um i think that the alignment needs to happen from what gray county is doing to west gray rolls out and follows through to this committee um i think it's just been a very long time coming on this community improvement program. It's hard to maintain the enthusiasm for something that we've given a budget number to. Um, yes, I guess we'll carry that budget over, whatever hasn't been used for this year and, and whenever the CIP is finalized, then we'll be able to really make that impact. But I think it's the alignment of our strategy. So somewhere between economic development being our goal, um, I don't feel that anybody's taking an inventory of businesses in our community or gaps in the businesses. Um, so if we have farming, you know, Gray County is on to the ag uh, processing part. That doesn't really affect our lower tier at all, like Gray County's doing that part. So it really is the alignment, what do we want done? And, and following through to each subcommittee of economic development. So the tree lighting happening, the reason tree lightings are so important to our community, one is the social aspect of potentially getting together this year, but the other aspect is to draw people to the downtowns, to have time for them to shop and to, um, to, to use, utilize the businesses and see our downtowns. So, the idea of the CBC not being part of the economic development, I don't really see them being separate. I see that we definitely need to have more in the parks area, but I wouldn't want to take the CBC, which is the commercial beautification committee. I wouldn't want to see that come out of economic development because if we don't have our downtowns looking beautiful, what's the attraction to come or to build a business or to stay and spend money? So I think that, we need to have a bit more uh, umph muscle in their mandate that there's an inventory process of what businesses we have and the gap analysis of what businesses we need and then attracting businesses and retention of businesses or the succession planning. Um, I think there's a lot more we could do in the mandate part uh, for economic development. I also think that the CBC is more the operational piece and for that, I'm very grateful. We have a lot of dedicated volunteers. In fact, the CBC is a, a small handful of volunteers that do amazing work. Um, I would like them to be able to come to council and, and tell us of their needs. Um, you know, sometimes we get that through their minutes. Sometimes this year, the minutes are a bit wonky because, you know, they're maybe waiting to be approved even. So um, I definitely think the CBC has more of an operational goal to it and um, I need to see the alignment though this committee is, is on a, a CIP and then we'll roll out the strategy that's great but it's taking a long time businesses are getting frustrated members on the committee are getting frustrated we need to as a council be responsive to the community's needs I'm I'm not sure what the hang-up is anymore on the CIP but I'm looking forward to that coming to council for ratification and i also think that the mandate of the committee the economic development committee needs to be increased so that we have that inventory gap analysis and attraction retention of the right businesses that we need thank you well thank you for that and i i have to say again that i was most pleased to move the uh, the motion at the county with regard to the funding that was coming to the lower tiers with regard to um, the CIP programs, the CIP initially started at uh, at the county level, and then uh, it was um, brought forward to the lower tiers. That had to do a lot of uh, a lot of um, work. There were some public meetings that were required, and um, basically it, it ended up. I'm going to suggest a, 
a process that took a year, COVID, in, COVID included in that. I, I just would like, um, with regard to the CIP, because there's a bit of conversation all around, and I do um, suggest that um, Economic Development Committee has done a brilliant job in spearheading uh, that project. And we're coming to the end of it where it's, it will be before council and it will be our consideration for ratification. And then um, I'm, I'm thinking that it would be a, a rollout in January, but let's see. Um, before I go to Councillor Shea, I definitely want um, uh, Madam CAO just to comment on the CIP because there, there is um, definitely community or rather, shall I say, um, business owners that are most anxious to get started on this. And I think the timing is right. Uh, Madam uh, CIO, can you just uh, fill in the blanks for us, please? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. And thank you, Councillor Hergert, for your questions and uh, sharing comments that, that you've heard from the community. I would also like to note that our planner is, on, is, is attending the meeting and she is the lead on the community improvement plan because the bulk of it falls under the Planning Act. And that and therein lies some of the timelines that that uh, the community may not be aware of because of the requirement for public meetings and, and um, comment, commenting back. Uh, Madam Mayor, if, if you would like, we could have our, spend, we could have our planner comment on that. But um, at, at this point, we are in the home stretch. We are as excited about the community improvement plan as our business community and uh, are anticipating a, a robust communication rollout so that everyone's aware that it's available. Well, thank you for that. Before I, I call upon uh, Planner Spencer, I think one of the things that um, that we could utilize along the way for, for a big project like this is maybe interim media releases to say exactly where we're at in the process and having our, our community, um, our business community very aware of exactly where we are in the process. So, I mean, that that's, um, that's something to consider for each of our projects as we move forward. So with that, I'm wondering if uh, Planner Spencer is available to speak at this time. I am, thank you. Through you, Madam Mayor. Um, absolutely, we're, we're right at the cusp of having this finalized and ratified by council and then given to the county, they've commented, they have no concerns. We have not had anyone issue any concerns with respect to implementing the plan and the strategy of the plan. So I think we're in a good position that this will definitely happen before, you know, the end of January, uh, 2021, hopefully sooner, but again, process is, is kind of the component that takes time with the appeal period, things like that. So Planner Spencer, is there one more meeting um, that is, uh, is a, a requirement through the province uh, or, or the overall process? And is there an opportunity um, that we could potentially have this on one of our council meetings uh, prior to the end of this year? So that the it is scheduled for be... December 1st, Madam Mayor. So the, um, okay, so that we're looking at the potential, and I say potential because council hasn't met on the item, the potential for ratification on December 1st for That's the CIP. Correct. And then there That's would correct. be um, a launch in uh, in January. That is correct. For the, yes, for the um, uh, business businesses. Okay, okay. Thank you, Madam CIO and Planner Spencer, Councillor Hergert. Anything further? Yes, I have two questions very quickly. Uh, the timeline, December 1st, that's lovely to know. I mean, even for council to know that really? December 1st, like a week from now, we're gonna take that up. That's very good information for us to have. Also just curious how much money out of economic development would have been spent this year under the community improvement program, if any. Um, would that go to Planner Spencer or uh, CIO Johnson? Oh, uh, whoever's willing to take oh, so it. What I'm, so what, I'm, what I'm hearing, um, excuse, <laughs> excuse me, what I'm hearing is CIP is coming to a meeting near you. So uh, we're just getting a little bit off track as as uh, Clerk Sharbeck as uh, just refocusing. Uh, more to come with regard to the CIP um, and acknowledging that that's coming forward. So we'll get the information out to council and also know that it's on uh, December 1st. Thank you, Clerk, Clerk Sharbeck, for refocusing. Um, uh, Councillor Herger, anything more on committees? 
Uh, definitely keep economic development, but I feel like there's an expansion of their mandate that is a requirement. Basically, um, inventory gap analysis, attraction, retention of businesses, along with um, the, the alignment of the strategy from the county down to West Gray. Now we've got the rollout. I mean, really, it's just communication. December 1st, it's coming. So that's good to know. Thanks. Good. Uh, thank you. And I, I, again, I just want to do, again, my shout out to uh, the three members of um, Economic Development Committee, uh, Councillor Townsend, Councillor Hutchinson, and Deputy Mayor Hutchinson for all their fine work on this committee. It's a large mandate. Uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot to do within this portfolio of the committee, and I appreciate uh, your role on it, as well as the um, citizens. I'm going to say that just overall, thank you to our citizens for, for their uh, service on each of our committees and uh, again with the uh, commercial beautification committee as well um, appreciate all that work okay councillor Shea councillor Hamilton then councillor Shea please thank you your worship um, I was uh, uh, concerned to hear a couple of uh, the previous speakers uh, expressing frustration with the uh, economic development committee uh, and its uh, rate of progress and I'm just wondering if, if perhaps having and, and there, there are some vacancies that have come up recently. I'm just wondering if having uh, the mayor attached to this committee uh, might not make it a little bit more effective. I'd like to uh, float that idea. Uh, and if, um, yeah, okay. I'd, I'd like to have a brief discussion about that as an option. Um, sure, uh, certainly I'm ex officio on all of our West Gray committees. I would be happy to lend a hand in, in any capacity that I can. Uh, I, and so, uh, so noted, um, it would be my pleasure for sure. Um, Clerk Sharbeck, is this a time that we can discuss that? Is this, or is there a, a different time? So I'm just um, um, building a structure around Councillor Shea's comment and question, please. Thank you, to your worship. Um, it, it's an interesting point and uh, the mayor's role is very important uh, for council and all of our committees. So at this point in time, uh, yes, it's correct that the mayor plays an ex officio role. So that means by virtue of office, she's mm -hmm. a member of every committee of council. And at this point in time, our procedural bylaws says that um, ex officio means you can attend but not vote and you don't count in quorum. But mm -hmm. technically that uh, needs to be tidied up in our new procedural bylaw, ex officio certainly does participate um, so you don't count in quorum. Committee has to have quorum of their own, um, but the mayor may attend by virtue of the office and fully participate. And that does mean vote mm -hmm. at any committee. So that's one option for moving forward is um, taking advantage of that ex officio role with uh, the Economic Development Committee, or there's an option of appointing another member of council being the mayor to that committee. How many, oh wait, how many members are on it now? Currently three, three members of uh, council. So we we don't want a quorum <laughs> on any of these committees is uh, one piece as well. So it might be um, perhaps the meetings you attend as ex officio even would be if another member of council wasn't able to attend that meeting and let you know, I'm not sure, but it, it's something to explore now for sure when we're looking at this committee structure. Well, Councillor Shea um, so, and members of committee, certainly I will um, uh, participate in any way, whether that's through a revised ex officio definition for, uh, for the best way to describe this. Um, and also I will uh, do my very best on uh, any way that I can help Economic Development Committee. Thank you for bringing that forward and uh, rest assured that it will occur in some capacity. You still have the mic, Councillor. So just as a, a point of uh, clarification, um, uh, Clerk Sharbeck, uh, our previous clerk did uh, allow uh, uh, council members, a quorum of council members to uh, participate in uh, committees uh, if the clerk was present. Uh, specifically our police building, uh, it wasn't called the police building committee, it was the police building steering committee. Uh, had four members of council, I think. And uh, yeah, so I, I don't know if that, that would be the same case here. Certainly, Clerk Sharbeck. Okay, thank you, Your Worship. 
Thank you, Councillor Shea. That's a good point. Um, so moving forward, if it's Council's wish to have four members of Council on the Economic Development Committee, it's really important that um, we give notice and uh, follow through on that very carefully with how that's handled. It's not, um, if there's a quorum, it's a council meeting. It's not an economic development committee meeting. So further so exploring. It, yeah. um, it, it's a technicality, but certainly uh, with clerk or deputy clerk or, or even a recording secretary, um, with uh, some authorities provided to them, could certainly make that happen if it was council's wish, but I would I just tread carefully with the form. Well, then so what I'm hearing is that she's look, uh, the clerk is just looking for a bit more time to explore different options and whether that is through the ex officio definition within our procedural bylaw um, or, or other options. Um, so that can be a, um, an activity that um, that will be followed followed up on. So, Councillor Shea, anything further? No, I'll leave that for, for you, your worship, and the clerk. Thank you. So noted. Great. Thank you. Uh, looking at Councillor Hamilton and then Councillor Hutchinson. Please go ahead, Councillor Hamilton. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. Um, could the clerk please clarify um, subcommittees and how they report? I, I think I heard our clerk say it a little differently than I understood. So just looking for that clarification. Thank you. That's a good question. Clerk Sherbeck. Thank you, Worship. Um, subcommittees are committees of council and they report to council. So they definitely have to be taking minutes and posting the agendas of their, of their meetings. And if their report to council is uh, that their minutes are included with uh, this one, for example, if the CBC included their um, minutes with the economic development package, they would still be reporting to council just through their parent committee, but their agendas definitely need to be posted on our website and public notice, um, all, all those provisions as well. So okay, it, that makes sense. The ways so, we can do that as long as their information gets to council at the end of the okay. day. That help? It, it does, I guess then I'm wondering why have a subcommittee why not just a uh, committee? Um, it, I guess it depends on uh, the will of council or uh, the, the mandate. Um, I think this one was developed as uh, specific to the business area and uh, sort of evolved as, as under the direction of the, or the advice yeah. of the economic development committee. I'm not too sure, but um, Again, whether they stay there or whether they become their own committee in their own right or their mandate evolves in some way, that's something for sure to explore. Um, so I guess what I'm getting today is um, the CBC is definitely a keeper, but maybe another discussion about just how they fit or, or what they're called. Is that fair? Yeah, definitely. I, we're all on board with them being a keeper. I guess um, I just don't understand if they're not um, reporting to their committee or running their ideas by their advisory committee, then why? I guess I just don't understand the function or the purpose of a subcommittee. Um, I, I I'm just think, seeking clarity for that. Yes, do you, Worship? Sorry, Councillor Hamilton. I, I think I've um, maybe confused that a bit. Yes, okay. they, they have been created with um, a much more finite mandate than the parent committee is generally okay. the role of subcommittees. So the committee is formed by council or struck by council. Subcommittees are also struck by council, not committees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So a committee doesn't come up with their own subcommittees, only council right. points committees of council. Okay, that's that's really good. <laughs> Thanks for, that, you know, I appreciate this tidying up. Created. of but perhaps yeah, the Economic yeah. Development Committee would recommend to council that a subcommittee specific for commercial beautification be created. Mm -hmm. okay. And then they have a very small mandate that fits okay. within economic development, or perhaps it doesn't when we sort it out, but right now it does. 
Okay. Uh, no, that, 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 that committee definitely needs to provide advice to their parent committee. That's their mm -hmm. job and report back to their parent committee, but their minutes have to get to council. They don't stop the parent committee. They do follow through from the parent committee to council. Okay. As long as council has, uh, council needs to see their agendas and their minutes. They're not lost in just reporting to the economic development committee. So uh, I, I think I yeah. um, wasn't very clear the first time around, sorry. That so helps, you have made it clear. Thank back you. in the day, there was a um, committee handbook that had oh. a definition of um, what a committee is, what a subcommittee is, what a standing committee is, what you know, yeah. purpose of council, and um, you know, reporting relationships and oh. duration of meetings, uh, you know, or timing of meetings. You know, maybe we're maybe at some point we would be looking for something like that. I know I just generated a question or comment from uh, <laughs> Madam CAO, which is what this meeting is about, correct? Uh, sure. Madam. Uh, Madam Clerk, rather, did you want to say anything to that? Um, through your worship, I think um, moving forward, once our list of committees is fine-tuned a little bit, it's going to make communication with those um, yeah. committees a lot easier. And uh, perhaps the, the training for the chair, the secretary, the annual uh, necessary training programs, and um, some of the definitions and some of the rules they need, uh, perhaps training in um, Municipal Conflict of Interest Act, things they need oh, to know truly. to be safe yeah. when they're doing their, their duties and look after themselves as well as council. Uh, oh. I think a committee handbook is probably um, due for a, a revisit. Great, and there was one here. Um, you know, I don't know the, the, um, the updated, version of it, but good. Thank you very much, uh, Clerk Sharbeck, for being mm -hmm. um, uh, re receptive to that. I think it'll be most mm -hmm. interesting. I can envision that on our website and uh, a reference being made to uh, citizens that are potentially interested in being our committees and, and reference mm -hmm. to our, our council here. Uh, Councillor Hamilton, you still have the mic and then I'll go on to Councillor Hutchinson, but I'm sensing that we're, we are keeping economic development and the um, CBC as well, and I think we're getting on to uh, the next one after that. But again, you still have the mic before that oh, gets processed. Just a couple more. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. I love the idea of a handbook. I hope we can pin that idea so we can flesh that out at another time. It's great. Um, I guess my other question is um, staff resources on the committee and subcommittee. Do they have a dedicated resource and is it what they need to support what they're doing? Do they need more resources, less resources? So just checking in on that as well, please. Um, through your worship, Ben, I'm sure uh, CAO Johnson can elaborate on this. Um, how, I guess what's on the staff plates is uh, her um, decision to make. At this point in time, we have, um, we have over 25 committees. We don't have staff to serve them all. So should there be staff support for them all? That would be fantastic. But we, there's just no way to do that with just staff at this point in time. I know the Economic Development Committee has staff support and I'm, I'm not sure if the subcommittee has their own staff support. I think they have yes. had. Perhaps the CAO would help me. <laughs> sure, Madam CAO, who I believe is the staff support, but I also think uh, Recreation Supervisor Hewlett also um, is most popularly attending those meetings as well. Uh, CAO Johnson, did you want to uh, comment? Yes, thank, thank you, Madam Mayor, sure. and thank you, Councillor Hamilton. Economic development has traditionally been um, uh, staff supported, and I believe that that's, that's the appropriate um, use of some staff's time. I do attend all of the meetings when I when my schedule permits, and that pretty much is 99% of the time. And I attend the CBC meetings as well. Recently though, uh, Mr. Hewlett has been assisting because they are such an operational busy committee that um, you know they, they need that staff support to um, make things happen in, in a very quick turnaround. The um, Economic Development Committee being a, a strategic body, uh, you know, I, I believe the staff support helps them move through their uh, mandate and some of the things they'd like to do. I would like to add though that now that um, we have a full-time planner who 
is um, versed in economic development and assists us. She also attends the meetings, particularly lately with the, with the community improvement plan and all the questions that the community's had and, and working us through that process. Um, you know, depending on the agenda, you know, this, the um, planner may pop in and then, and then may leave again. We are just really at a, at a crossroads of what we want to tackle next. And I believe the strategy is the next project. So I don't really see staff support waning with that committee. As our clerk had mentioned, I believe a lot of the committees could use staff support. We have a committee um, staff liaison, but that position is really, uh, well, that, that function is handled by staff to just assist in getting agendas and minutes posted to the website. That's really the extent of what we can uh, manage at this point with, um, with our workload. It had been um, addressed, and I'm jumping a little bit in our agenda, but through the org review, um, that was something that, that came up time and again. How do we better support our committees? And um, that's something that we may want to explore in the new year. Anything further, Councillor Hamilton? Oh, thank you. I just noted that there's no councillor support on the beautification subcommittee. So do subcommittees re require a councillor uh, according to the Municipal Act or our insurance? And, and or does this committee, would it be of, of help to have a councillor? How do we decide which committees have council, council reps on them? Clerk Sherbeck. Hey, Rashtip, that's a really good question. And you'll see some of our committees don't have a council rep on them, and uh, some of them do, whether they're subcommittees or not. It's completely at the discretion of council. Okay. Um, so these committees, we've gotten through all of our local boards that are um, have a lot more legislation wrapped around what we can and can't do or who sits mm -hmm. at those tables. So these discretionary committees are indeed at the discretion of council. Mm -hmm. So there is good council representation on the parent committee with three council members there. And I think um, from my point of view, I think we've talked a lot about communication, not just to the communities, but from the committees and how do we make that a little bit better? So yes, tweaking the agenda, we've talked about that. Um, reaching out to them with, with our work from today is definitely something as well. But a, a member of council sitting on a, at least the parent committee, I think is an important piece to that flow of information between council and committees. So I think it does assist. Um, with the subcommittees, um, it's probably um, not, not as necessary when there's three council members on the parent committee that information is coming through because any of those council members could bring um, CBC information forward as, as a subcommittee of their committee for council information. But I think on the parent committees, it's an important piece to look at um, not just the chairs, but council reps as well. And sometimes our chairs and council reps um, have to help each other out and be a team to get the communication flowing. So, mm -hmm. Great. And I, and I think one other option, I'll just put it out there, that um, along the line of what Councillor Hamilton is suggesting that potentially uh, council will consider committee, city or council sitting as committee, may consider having a council rep on CBC, mm -hmm. and maybe that is an existing economic development committee member, whereby mm -hmm. it may make it available for, for uh, me to serve on economic development committee. Again, options, we're just looking at options and solutions. So I, Councillor, we still have the mic, but I do want to reference, because that is my job, that we've been two hours on this report. It's going really well. We're making inroads and it's an important feature for our community, mm -hmm. our committee members, and uh, for us serving as council. So um, mm -hmm. not suggesting that we're too long on this report at all by any means. I'm just uh, alerting council to the, um, to the time frame. Uh, Councillor Hamilton, you still have the mic. No, that's great, Mayor Robinson, thank you. And I think we can pin this idea. I don't think we have to determine that today, whether uh, we, sh we should have a council rep on the, sub on the subcommittee. I'm leaning towards that we should, but perhaps this be also a question. I'm hopeful that we do a survey of our committee members and our question can be, uh, do you feel um, supported by um, staff? Do you feel supported by um, council? maybe that's not the right wording, but um, just in terms of um, them having the resources and the tools and being most efficient and, um, and supported. So something to consider um, 
as we as we look at all our committees and giving them the supports mm -hmm. that they need. Um, thank you. And also just to note, I'm hearing the the, the frustration um, that some committee members might be feeling on this committee. So another reason I'd really like for the survey to to roll out when it's the right time. Thank you. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, I, I am aware of the frustration on um, uh, CBC and, um, uh, you know, it's just something that uh, we're aware of and that from time to time that does happen, but it's how we deal with it and it is to address it. So, and that's what we do. Uh, here. Okay, thank you for that, Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hutchinson. Yeah, Councillor Hutchinson. I, uh, I'll just try to be quick. I have two or three items I just want to throw out there. Um, sure. I did question the part about staff support for some of these committees, and, and I know when we list the committees, we list the public uh, members, we list whether there's council support, but we don't list anything about staff. So I'm just wondering whether we should mention uh, in there that there is staff support for some committees, because some get it, some do not. So just a food for thought. Yes. Um, the, other, the other thing was, um, I just want I just throw something out for food for thought for Councillor Hamilton when she talks about subcommittees. I believe in her sub sustainability committee, they do have two subcommittees and I'm not sure how they function and, and she might wanna think about how they function and how that fits in the role, but I think we're gonna have a discussion about that maybe later on. Yeah. Uh, economic development, um, the, um, I was one of the ones that mentioned about the frustration, but I, but I must admit that this has been a very unusual year. And uh, so the COVID year hasn't helped us for sure. Uh, the other thing that, that has come into the mix is that we have a new planner and part of her role is economic development. And uh, I see economic development, uh, staff member uh, overseeing economic development is a very, very important role. It's something that we fought for for some time, or I've mentioned for some time about trying to get someone in that role. And I think that's part of um, moving our committee forward that that staff member um, uh, really needs to help economic development move forward. I think they're the face of the municipality. They're the person that's out there, um, you know, pushing ideas and talking to people and businesses. So I, th I really think that's uh, something that, um, Maybe we need to look at uh, the portfolio of um, Laura Lee and, and where, you know, what, what the expectations are. Not, nothing against what she's doing. I'm just saying, you know, have we really refined, defined that role uh, within economic development? So uh, I think that's important that, um, that we do that. And, and I think that will help us going forward just because it has been a very unusual year and, and she's come in partway through the year to which makes it more difficult. And uh, then we've got the CIP, which, you know, was sort of put onto her plate. And so, yeah, a lot of things going on, but I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully next year will be a bonus year for sure. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. All food for thought and very important statements. I just did a quick count members of the committee. I think we've got approximately, cause I, like I said, a quick count of uh, 13 committees or uh, subcommittees that we need to get through. Uh, and we've got a lot of other interesting um, reports if we're able to get through those today. Um, and I'm gonna suggest that we already know what we're doing with Economic Development Committee at, at this stage and also the CBC. And uh, let's move on to West Gray Local Accessibility Advisory Committee. I know right after that, um, there is, uh, uh, I'm gonna suggest there potentially is a discussion with regard to Parks Committee and Structure, and then as uh, Councillor Hutchinson alluded to, um, the West Gray Sustain Sustainability Advisory Committee. So we've got some stuff to, or rather some work to get going on as well. So with that, let's move on. West Gray Local Accessibility Advisory Committee. Quick share back, please. Uh, Chair, Your Worship, you have the terms of reference um, in my report before you. I think uh, this committee is providing advice to council, I would say. Um, this is a keeper and we carry on. <laughs> so I, thank you. I do want to acknowledge uh, the good work that's being done here, recognizing there is a, um, an accessibility advisory committee at the county. I see there's complete division in, in their mandates, but also common goals with that. Um, is it something that we could just acknowledge this is a keeper and let's move on? Any... I know Councillor uh, Shea, you are the member of this um, committee. Is there anything, can we just move on? I, I think so, the committee seems Good. to be working well. And, yeah, so 
Thank you. I have, thank you very much for your comment as the appointed member. Councillor Hutchinson's got a, a thumbs up and I do see acknowledgement um, on, on screen, but Councillor Townsend, you have your hand up. Uh, I do, thank you very much, uh, Madam Mayor. There was a reference that says um, the terms of reference haven't been established. So it's just the general terms, you know, for committees that, that uh, apply. Is it intent of the committee to define their own set of, um, I'll say revised or um, other types of terms of reference that they would include in that? Or are you happy with the general ones? I just wanted to clarify that point. Sure, and Clerk Sherbuck has an answer. Sure, um, some committees have very specific terms of reference. We do have a general committee terms of reference for those that don't. Only council sets the terms of reference for committees as only council strikes committees. So if a committee is finding that the general terms of reference is um, difficult to work within or it doesn't suit them as well as perhaps something more defined specifically for them, they can certainly make a recommendation to council that uh, their terms of reference be amended to add or amend whatever. So at this point, um, the Accessibility Advisory Committee is and my understanding and what I've seen coming out of this committee is that they're working very well and uh, they, they haven't brought forward any suggestions at this point, but they may in, in the new year, who knows, right? Great, and they've had uh, tangibles. And, uh, I'm very, very pleased with that. So with that, I see Councillor Hergert's hand, but then after Councillor Hergert, if it is okay with everybody, shall we move on to a bit of a discussion with Parks and Rec? Councillor Hergert, you've got the mic at this point. Thank you. I have seen their work come forward in, um, in some recommendations. I was just curious if I could ask Councillor Shea, are there any resources that you could imagine are needed next year, such as human resources or budget? And, and I say budget because we've never had a budget line for accessibility before, but I'm just curious your thoughts. Uh, sure, I don't think we, there, we haven't identified a need like that. One thing that we are doing, uh, the, the members are trying to create an inventory of uh, accessibility obstacles within the community. So that might turn into a, a budget item down the road. Uh, we are uh, working with staff currently to investigate an, an available uh, grant opportunity that uh, Councillor uh, Hutchinson brought to our attention, uh, which might be going in next month. So we're just meeting uh, tonight to uh, create a list of priorities that we could then deliver back to um, staff uh, that they could follow through on. Great, thank you for that. Okay, question asked and answered. Um, we're good to move on. Well, thank you very much. Okay, West Gray Parks Recreation and Culture Committee. Uh, there's a, a few things on this one, but yes. uh, Clerk Sharber, could you please take us through? Um, it, it had a it had a solid um, three committee. Um, uh, recreation committee with three um, members of council on it. Then there was a bit of a, uh, I won't use, I'm, I'm trying to use a different word. And then there was um, evolving into something different, but it didn't quite take place. Let's get that all cleared up now and uh, move on with, with this um, as it were. Quick Sharbeck, <laughs> that's my preamble. We need, we need to get this restructured um, is the point is what I'm trying to make. Yes, and I guess moving through this, uh, just being aware of the time, we are not going to get through this if we do an hour committee. Yeah. But if, if we just think of uh, keep, um, sort out, okay. and dissolve, I think this one is one that needs, um, does need some attention. Yes. Is we have our West Gray Parks and Recreation and Culture Committee, and then we have one for Aiton, and one for Durham, and one for Newstead that um, I think the first one is uh, the chair and one alternate from each of the other three committees um, and three members of council. Uh, the other committees don't, I believe, have a member of council on them. So they're not members of council from those other three committees and the chairs have not been identified. So I don't know who, yeah. Well, uh, it, it, they 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 need to be identified in our bylaw to be clear, so that we know who actually forms this committee. 
but the the counselors aren't I think named in uh -huh. there's some confusion here and I'm wondering if perhaps these three groups which the overall first group is made up of if these three groups if we could reach out and have a meeting with the chairs or chairs and vice chairs um, or all of them through zoom and just sort out who's doing what and how can we make this um really about a, a wet service to west gray and how do we unify this group a little bit and make sure that their mandate makes sense not just to council but to them so they're all doing some um really valuable work but i think pieces of it are getting missed mm -hmm. with this uh broad spread out format and yeah and i don't and, know if broad is is quite the word yeah. but i i think um i think our job is to just define this a little bit better and make sure that we have a group that feels supported by council and by staff and perhaps a clear mandate moving forward and I'm wondering if, if that would, uh, uh, with the committees, okay, if, if we could reach out and try to have a, a, a all three groups at, at one spot and have a discussion. I do have a, a list of speakers on this one, which I knew this uh, particular committee would would generate discussion. Um, uh, just from my perspective, uh, there were three uh, local recreation recreation culture committees, um, you know, and we have three uh, members of council on it. There was a hierarchy, in my opinion, that was created that then the chairs could also form another committee. Not, I'm not certain that that um, is, is really um, necessary at this point. And just um, do we, we want to move uh, forward with uh, recreation committees. Uh, it's generated a lot of discussion. I want to go to Councillor Hutchinson, who had his hand up for, for a bit of time on this one. Please go ahead. Here. So my first comment is the title, first of all, is, is uh, not quite right. It says uh, it's the culture, oh, let me refer to it here. It's the West Gray Parks Recreation Culture Advisory Committee for the first one. As it says later down under its mandate terms of reference, it makes reference to the advisory committee. Um, so uh, for that one, for sure, I, I question, you know, particularly how often we meet. I think we've only met once that I know of. But I would like to refer to maybe the CAO and maybe she wants to speak to this. We do have council representation on each of these committees. Um, so um, I'm not sure why it says we don't. Because um, I know I'm on the Durham one and I believe uh, Councillor, I can't say, Councillor Hergitz on, was on news was on Eaton. I don't know if that's still a, a case. And maybe Councillor Shea was on Newstead. But anyways, can we refer to the CEO? Maybe she can clarify some things here and then we can maybe go from there. Okay, uh, let's go to Madam CAO. And then uh, after you speak, Councillor Hutchinson, I just wanna give Councillor Shea a heads up. I'll, I'll be calling on you next, just because um, there's been a lot of discussion with the other members of council and I want you to have an opportunity to speak as well. Madam CAO, to, your, um, to Councillor Hutchinson's inquiry. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. And thank you, Councillor. Just a bit of history, the, the three local committees have been the traditional recreation committees in West Gray. The new advisory committee that was formed, which, which is membership comprised of members of council and the chairs of the local committee, was intended to have a, have a greater level of collaboration for recreation and events throughout West Gray. And rather than having each group look for their own resources and you know compete for weekends, let, let's get together and you know, look at recreation with a West Gray lens, in addition to what the local committees would like to do. Our bylaw, appoint, bylaw appointees are the three councillors and the chairs of those committees for the advisory committee. The local committees, which are kind of like CBC, they're the working groups. There is no bylaw appointing councillors to those committees, although I do know that council members have been attending and have been supporting the work of the local groups. And, and when you think about the work they do, that is the committee that puts on the craft craft show that is the committee that puts on um you know the skating parties and those kinds of community events that's happening at the local level so so what we were trying to achieve was to maintain the uh, worker bees as it were for the delivery of events but have an have a parent committee as our clerk 
uses that phrase, which I really quite like, have a parent committee that is the strategy and the advisory committee to council. And having those um, chairs and vice chairs at the advisory table, we've met, there was actually three meetings and, and they were incredibly productive and linkages were starting to happen. And then COVID just put a stop to everything uh, fun and, and recreational. So, so truly they haven't really had a chance. We haven't had a chance to really uh, test drive this model. So to say that there's challenges, I think COVID is the challenge, quite frankly. And the, um, the folks that volunteer at the local level, they are the passionate community builders that are interested in delivering programs. And the chairs of those committees are the ones that come to the advisory level to help shape what recreation across West Gray could look like. That's where we were getting to. Thank you. Councillor Hutchinson, you still have the mic. Yeah, well, um, I, I agree. I mean, there, there may be some merit to having this advisory committee um, you know, to look at the, the whole West Gray perspective, but I find it peculiar that it says that we have three members of council on that meet with this committee, yet well, when we talk about the actual committees themselves, we don't have a member of council. So who are the three members if they're not people that are designated for the other committees? And, and I believe they are. I mean, I've, I've been to uh, the Durham ones and I know some have been to the others. So that's something we need to clarify for sure. And then I, uh, I'll leave it at that. And then I have some comments about the Durham committee in particular, but um, I'll let other people speak. Okay, so that's been so noted uh, to seek clarification. Anything further before I go to Councillor Shea? Nope. Okay, Councillor Shea then. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, so all, the, all that uh, confusion aside, uh, I think these, uh, committees do need to be sort of reinvestigated from the ground up. And I do think we should do that in consultation with the groups. Um, my, my observation is that they, the three are, do three different things. They're not synonymous. They're not, they're not equivalent from community to community. Um, and they've all been given the same title, which is Parks, Recreation and Culture. And they do not all embrace the activities of Parks, Recreation and Culture. So I think we need to sort of reflect on the reality of what's going on and sort of rebuild this to suit uh, the reality rather than trying to pigeonhole them into some sort of uh, common uh, framework. Uh, so I am involved with the Newstack group uh, and we do, um, we have three sport activities that we support, uh, pickleball, soccer and roller skating. Um, it's been, you know, I've, I've wondered why pickleball and soccer are part of a committee when all of the other sports that we do within West Gray are standalone organizations like hockey and lacrosse. Um, so uh, we, this group also does fundraising, it does the craft show. Um, uh, so I think that we should uh, have that discussion and say, are, are we supporting this, this group and this activity the right way by having it be a, a committee with this particular designation. So I don't think we have to just talk about this for an hour, but I think it should go on the, on the middle list of something to <laughs> Good. Thank you very much for that as we move along. So having said that, um, uh, let me see, we've got Councillor Hutchinson. Um, I just double checking your hand's gonna be down, right? Good, okay. Uh, Councillor Townsend, Councillor Herger, are we able to have perhaps quick comments if you might. And so we can move on, I leave it to you. Go ahead, Councillor Townsend. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, one of my questions I wrote um, on my own review was, is this organization working? And I say that because I had heard the Madam CAO earlier, not just today, but earlier talk about the effectiveness of getting all the groups together. But again, do you need an advisory committee structure to do that? Or can staff do that or um, sort of, uh, I don't know, precipitate such a meeting annually to kind of set direction for going forward or to ensure that we still have some alignment where we need it. And I think the difference between the committees and the different focuses will represent partially the community and, and what the community wants, likes, and is asking for. These committees worked very well um, before the advisory and they've They've tended to work relatively well, I'll say afterwards, although I do know there's been some issues there about, you know, are people getting the right support? Can they do what they, they think they need to do in the community needs? So I, I'd love to see a review of this, you know, similar to um, 
you know, what Councillor Shea just said, to ensure that we're giving them what they need because they are adding value. They really are. And I think the community sees that too. And then the organization itself is, do you need the advisory or is that something that staff can, I guess, say orchestrate? Um, the other thing has to do with um, when you throw the word parks in there, then people start talking gardens. And I know Supervisor Hula is starting to get calls or emails about the condition of the gardens. And so that needs to be dealt with. Is it, is it under this parks banner or is it under public works or if they're gonna be volunteers, they're gonna do it, is it horticultural? Like this is something we need to do as well. So maybe the clarification of what that means when we put parks in there, you know, clarify the name. So it's not park maintenance, okay? <laughs> we have other people that perform maintenance other than the recreation side. And if we can clarify that, we might actually satisfy the public a little better and get rid of some of the angst of they don't always know who to go to and yet they see it not being done. And so you go to who you think it is and the name usually leads you there. So I wanted to share that thought as well. Thank you. Very good point. And uh, when I hear parks, I hear in, for me anyway, budget deliberation, quite frankly, in terms of how that, how that needs to be addressed. And that's just food for thought. Um, okay, Councillor Herger, or um, perhaps do you have quick comments so we can move on? But I leave that to you. Please go ahead. I actually don't have very quick comments because I was a member of the Aiton uh, Recreation Committee. So I definitely think this needs to go in the category of reinvent this committee. I think it started off very local. Um, what does the committee want to do? And that isn't really how committees go in that um, if council wishes a committee, then the committee serves at the discretion and the recommendation and the mandate of council. So I think we do have two competing interests here. And I think that has had some difficult moments for, I know eight in recreation, but as a whole of recreation, when we did get together in November of last year and try and talk about what are the activities that we'll have, it became very apparent that each community wanted different activities, had different resources being, you know, Roller skating's in Newstad. It's not in Durham, you know. So um, there were there was an unknown about what to do. If it was left to the committees to do and to plan, then Aiton had family ball tournament, uh, heavy on the fundraising. Is that council's will that these recreation committees have a fundraising component to it? Because that actually got us down to the municipal alcohol policy. And I'm glad that we've uh, somewhat ironed that out, but I think this committee for sure needs to be reinvented. I believe at the last meeting in November of 2019, where it was the overarching committee of uh, recreation advisory, we noticed that there was membership lacking. And so I think that membership lacking was because unknown mandate and, and really doesn't hit on all three of those items of parks, recreation and culture or are these more in tune with each community being historical events that took place and and how they have a social component and now that fits into cultural and so I really think that um, council needs to articulate whether or not we expect these recreation committees to be fundraising and the fundraising is great fundraising that goes on to have monies available for other recreation activities such as Aiton was fundraising and still is fundraising for the accessible park, which would be, again, another recreational opportunity. However, what is the goal of each of these recreation committees? Is it to fundraise $50,000 a year, $20,000 a year, or is the mandate something completely separate and apart from fundraising and more to the point of having recreational opportunities in our community that are available for all people? And I think that's really what recreation is to, uh, to be the focus. Um, so the membership that was lacking, we didn't really see a lot of membership involvement on the Durham committee uh, for recreation. I believe at our eight and local level, there was a, a major discussion regarding insurance and having subcommittees and so on. So I appreciate the clarification that Clerk Sharbeck has provided today that a subcommittee cannot just be created by the committee. 
And it definitely needs to have council's blessing about what it's doing and needs to report through the upper tier. You know, we, we shied away from saying upper tier, but then we had a local recreation and then we had an advisory recreation. And then overall, we still have a staff member and council. So it seemed heavy on the bureaucratic side and not enough on the homegrown local recreation that I think we actually want. So we have more staff than ever in the recreation um, areas, being facilities managers um, and so on. I think that we have different resources available from when this committee ed, uh, was struck. Um, let's see. So the reporting to committees uh, and pardon me, the reporting from committees to council, um, even the subcommittees, I'm not sure that that was happening. Um, appreciate Co Councillor Shea's uh, discussion about what the reality is. What do these committees for recreation, parks, culture, what do they want to be doing? And maybe they are better served by a community model that we could support them through the insurance part. So I think we have staff available now to help plan and organize um, events in our arenas. I'm just not sure where the, um, the way it was before is the best way for West Gray. So I, I definitely think that we should reinvent this committee. Um, I do have a question regarding roller skating and where that fits into insurance because I did not actually see roller skating included on Frank Cowan's uh, insurance report. And then further the, um, let's say the more, more insurable events that, uh, that these committees would hold, being like alcohol involved at um, an arena. We, we had a great event with the recreation group out of Ayton for a community concert. And, and really it was a blast. It was completely fun. Okay. Is it within our insurance mandate for a committee of council to be hosting an event like that. Let's get yeah. a question. Uh, let's get that uh, those questions answered. And I do know that Kirk Sharbeck would like to respond. And then I do see Councillor Hamilton on this one. And then perhaps we can move on. Um, so Clerk Sharbeck, please. Thank you, to you, Your Worship. Um, that was a, a number of points raised. So thank you, Councillor Herger. I think for these recreation committees, all three of the local committees and the uh, parent or advisory um, committee. I think uh, Councillor Shea really summed it up nicely that we need to revisit what right. is the reality today. So regardless of um, perhaps a, a historical mandate, where are we at today? And I really feel that we can't do that without engaging these groups and Absolutely. all at one table, so to speak, whether that's a Zoom table or a very large Paul, I'm not sure, but we need to facilitate that conversation and sort out what we're doing. And uh, to Councillor Herbert's point, um, yes, things have changed. So let's look at what we need to hear from the groups. What is, uh, what is their main purpose? Why are they on that group? What, what are they trying to do? Mm -hmm. uh, because it matters in serving the community. And yes, some pieces, might be better suited to a community group and perhaps sorting out um, the mandate or, or what's expected from the volunteers and from council, because it is about advising, providing advice to council. They are advisory committees, all of these discretionary committees. So I think that's a conversation for the new year. And I think, um, I think it's our job as staff to facilitate that and um, ask the uh, council members involved to join us with that mm -hmm. and encourage participation. Um, I would say at least from the chairs, but invite all the committee members to certainly hear the discussion and provide input. Um, the other piece about the insurance, uh, I guess um, I would say that um, roller skating is, is a little bit different. It's our program. So it's, it's under our main insurance umbrella. It wouldn't be part of this facility user piece. Um, I think if you wanted to rent um, the facility and have a family roller skating party, 
then you as an individual could pay for that extra facility user insurance. Does that yeah. sort of separate them out a little bit? Mm -hmm. And this facility user insurance is not for alcohol um, related events. So no licensed events for the $3 insurance. They would have to buy um, the PAL insurance. Mm -hmm. It's and a special, get a special occasion, occasion permit. permit. Yeah. And I think through that, they have to provide proof of insurance for that event, like a, a stag and doe or a, a licensed dance. So they, they wouldn't impact our facility use insurance or the premium for that either. So I know so this we is could one protect that... them, but in a little bit different ways. Yeah. So if, if we could, is that sort of summed up that this needs some work? And it needs a, a major conversation with yeah. the groups to start that work. Right. And that, sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. Uh, my apologies for that. It's never my intent. But I, I really see that just to summarize this, th this is this structure, uh, these committees uh, need more work and we definitely need the, the input from uh, the volunteers that serve on this committee, as well as the uh, members of council that uh, are appointed to this. So I'm going to suggest further work on this and, uh, and uh, bring this one back. Councillor Hamilton, do you just want to wrap up so that we can uh, can move on to the next one? Yes, thank you, Mayor Robinson. I'll, I'll keep my comment brief. I just wanted to circle back to our CEO's um, I, uh, comment about a West Gray lens. And so perhaps when we facilitate these conversations with our community groups, I think they can articulate really well and represent really well what their local needs are um, and their local goals. I don't want to lose sight of developing the West Gray lens and the West Gray strategy and what it means to be part of a broader community of West Gray. And I think that's what we were trying to achieve with the model that we have in place right now. And we'd want to further, further that, um, that conversation with our, our community groups when we meet with them in the winter or in January, hopefully. So not just what are your local needs, but hey, how do you envision us developing our West Gray vision together? Thank, yeah, you. thank you. Thank you very much. And it is so noted. Um, okay, so we've got the West Gray Ad Hoc Police Building Task Force. Madam CAO, please. Oh, sorry. Or me? <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, you know, sometimes I just defer to Madam CAO. That is not what I wanted to do here. And I recognize the pause, Madam uh, Clerk. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Worship. Yeah. I, I just want to speak ahead of you, Lord. No, no. <laughs> well, yeah, um, we're coming up to perhaps a break at 12 yes. noon. So but let's <laughs> forge on, great. please. Oh, okay. thank you. <laughs> so the West Gray Ad Hoc Police Building Task Force, as Council knows, is a very new um, committee. Uh, they had a very interesting meeting yesterday and really hammered through um, a draft terms of reference that they will be bringing um, forward to all of council for consideration. So you'll be hearing more from that group. And I would say um, my recommendation is leave it as is until you yeah, hear about, have a chance to sit as council and hear back from this group what they're looking at for a proposed terms of reference and um, a work plan from them because they had a, a very thorough discussion on that yesterday, if that suits. Yep, that sounds great. Councillor Hamilton, your hand is up. Is that from a previous conversation? Yep, okay, thank you. Councillor Townsend then. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, when I was reading the description, I wasn't quite sure, and maybe the terms of reference will help clarify it, but what the real mandate of the, um, the committee was. So for example, I would have assumed it was more oversight than anything else because there was no staff membership. There was, I think, staff support. And I'm not quite sure if that's the same or meant to be the same because a lot of what was listed as tasks, I would have thought would have been either police board setting some requirements initially um, and then coming to staff to help put something together. And the concern is not to go too far down um, spending a lot of money on design until the requirements are okay um, and pretty well finalized down, down the line. And then you get into what does that translate to and how much can council or is council prepared to spend, meaning the community, right? So I'm not sure how that ties together with what I read. And so I'd like some clarification if I can, please. 
So if that was a drought. Um, in terms of reference, uh, like Brooke Charbeck said, we did hammer out the uh, exact wording for uh, champion oversight. That, but we're bringing that forward at what meeting? And I think that's where we should reserve the discussion for, for it at that time. Clerk Sharback. Uh, thank you, through your worship. Um, they, well, the reports for the December 1st meeting are due today. So that's getting a little bit tricky as we move on through the day. Yeah. But I think that draft terms of reference, I would definitely like to bring forward to council as soon as possible. And I think that will provide a lot of clarity in um, what that committee is about. And at that point in time, it's the will of council to approve the terms of reference as presented or perhaps as amended or um, deem it appropriate to carry, carry on with the committee or not. So I, I don't think it, it's, I don't think we have much to talk about it today until council sees that draft terms of reference or the revised terms of reference that the community did put a great deal of time into sorting through. And um, I, I can assure you every word was considered carefully <laughs> in that. And um, I, I would just request council's patience in uh, making any changes to this until you have a chance to see that. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. It's just, I was, I didn't see all of that. And what I was reading wasn't clear what the committee was doing versus what staff was doing. And that that's where I kind of got a little um, concerned. It's not the, it's not the rules draft. need to be split, right? And, and the second thing is that I haven't seen anything that tells me the magnitude. I know we're, we're throwing a number around of what it might be, but beyond that, you know, I listened to the police chief saying, you know, our automobiles are virtually a mobile office. And so I wonder, are we still building 23, 30, whatever the number of offices and those kind of things. And I would assume that, as I say, the police board would have addressed all that up front as to what their model and requirements were from that perspective. So anyway, it was just trying to clarify the role. And if the terms of reference are coming, we'll see that first and then yep. any comments can follow. Well, thank, thank you, you for that. Okay, so please stay tuned um, with regard to uh, those draft terms of reference. Lamlash Hall Committee, Madam, uh, Madam Clerk, I think we've addressed that when we addressed Stoddard Hall as yes. well as Glen Elk Hall. Would that be correct? It, um, it's under that umbrella? Yes, Your Worship. I think this is one of the uh, let's reach out and have a conversation and see how best this, this group can move forward. Uh, there is a committee of council that um, needs to uh, sort of up, up the uh, communication with council or perhaps as a community group like the other ones. Um, so this is a, a sort and conversation one in my eyes. Okay. And um, the, the next one is the West Gray Sustainability Advisory Committee. And I see that there are um, two subcommittees, uh, Waste Reduction and Climate Action. And I know there had been discussion about perhaps separating those out into their own committees. I'm not sure where we're at. I really think this is the, the parent group and the two subcommittees is yep. something that perhaps these three groups come together for a discussion on how they fit together or do they still fit together or are things evolving? And I think, um, I think they might be evolving. <laughs> past right. where they're at now yeah I but i would sorry through your worship i would recommend that this be in the let's reach out and have a group conversation about this and get some input from the members certainly sustainability has uh in uh, from conversation with councillor shea and councillor hamilton has um evolved and i think there is a, a potential uh suggested model that may uh fit more um more appropriately now that it has evolved um, so I, I believe there needs to be that type of discussion uh, with regard to that, uh, whether the subcommittees just merge into one committee, uh, just clarity on, on how, that, how that needs to be addressed. Now, before we go any further, I want to acknowledge Councillor Hergert, and then uh, we'll continue the discussion at hand. So Councillor Hergert, please. Yes, thank you. I do actually have a question and I, I followed all the way up until we got to the sustainability and the subcommittee, but I do have a question going back to the police building subcommittee. 
how is it that it has staff support for a subcommittee? Or pardon me, for this um, police building committee? And, and maybe there's more than one staff. I'm just not sure. Um, for, that's my first question. Okay, um, uh, Clerk Charvac, please. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think just back to that meeting where this um, committee was appointed. Um, well, I can I tell you that, I, that this sorry, was- Mayor, can you yeah, uh, help me uh, remember that? Sure. So uh, as we had the, um, the first committee where we were dealing with um, looking for land, uh, we had uh, appointed uh, members of council, plus we had staff. And we need to keep in mind that this is a due diligence, um, um, important build for the community. So it was important that we had the right uh, resources from staff on it. It was, uh, it was approved through uh, council uh, that those resources were available and that uh, there was consistent reporting that took place uh, to the council with regard to the committee appointed members, but also the staff that were on it. So that took place. This is also um, a separate committee, but also a carry on in terms of um, the important build, but a different type of mandate. And the proposed uh, staff support are listed in the draft terms of reference will be coming forward for committee of the whole and then uh, council's consideration. Sometimes so, on committees, uh, there is uh, staff support. Uh, other times that uh, staff are just invited to come in when the item or the agenda item or the issue at hand requires the support or the expertise from our professional staff, operating staff or technical staff. So my question here though is, um, it sounds like there's several support staff that have been involved in the police um, building committee. And I appreciate that that report is coming to us. I guess I'm looking at the sustainability committee now and thinking, how is it that I don't, I don't think that they've ever had uh, a staff person. They've had obviously our director of infrastructure, public works as a, as a go-to point person, but I'm not sure that there's ever been a staff resource to that. Is that uh, just entirely left up to the CAO to best serve the needs of the community and, and the committees? Or is there a formal process of putting a staff member on each committee? So what I'd like to do is go to Councillor Shea and Councillor Hamilton, who are appointed on the West Gray Sustainability Advisory Committee, just to provide some feedback on that inquiry. And then I'll go over to Madam CAL. So Councillor Shea, could we have your feedback on that, please? Sure. Uh, yeah, we would love to have a staff person appointed to the committee. Uh, in fact, it would be great to have a staff person appointed to uh, do the core work of the committee. Uh, it'd be nice if we had a person whose job was uh, promoting sustainability within West Gray. Uh, we're, you know, we're a very lean organization and we don't have as near as many staff as we would like to have. So uh, this work is effectively being done by volunteers uh, mm -hmm. through the actions of this committee. Um, I think you know at, at another stage down the road when we're more mature or bigger or whatever that you will see a lot of these activities being uh, taken over by um, staff. But uh, we have had staff uh, come in to meetings. Uh, uh, Vance did uh, participate in one uh, meeting, uh, and we've had other staff come in when, um, when we, I think when we had delegations. So I, I don't. We're not. We're not feeling uh, under. Supported, I would suggest. I don't know if Councillor Hamilton has a different perspective. That would be the segue then to Councillor Hamilton. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. And thank you, Councillor Shea. I agree. Um, staff have been very amenable to coming as, re as needed, as requested. Um, it does cause a bit of a delay in the process. So in terms of being efficient and effective. So if committee has a question or an idea they have to wait a whole month to move it forward to, to have that input from, from staff um, to help move it forward. And I could see how having um, that staff, well, I know it from other communities I'm on where there are staff, you get your answer right away, you move forward. And sometimes you might spin for 20 minutes, half an hour, thinking you're getting somewhere and you get that moment to talk to staff and you get your answer within two minutes. So I think there is an opportunity to have, um, 
more more staff support um, at this committee. And as Councillor Shea says, we all, we also understand the capacity of our organization, um, and and that that will grow in time. Um, but I think having a more formal, dedicated staff person uh, would would be really helpful and would um, address for some. You know, it's a climate crisis. They see this as an urgent matter that should be moving forward quickly. Um, and so to have that dedicated staff and the expertise who can answer questions would be would be absolutely appreciated and supported. Um, and Mayor Robinson, when it's the right time, I can speak to um, the current formation of, of, of the committee. Um, so what I'd like to do is uh, go to um, CAO Johnson for a response, uh, finalize Councillor Hergert's if there's any further questions and then come over to you. Just uh, that's Thank our you. pathway. Uh, Madam CAO, any, anything to respond to with regard to staff support? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. And, and thank you, councillors uh, councillors, for your comments. I would, uh, I would relish the day when, when we could support all of our committees with some level of staffing, because I think, as you pointed out, Councillor Hamilton, that alone helps to move agendas and uh, initiatives forward at, at a more appropriate pace. Um, as Councillor Shea noted, we may get there someday. Uh, right now, the staff committees that are, you know, the, the building, the police building committee aside, because it's brand new, but the staff, the, the committees that are supported by staff have just been the traditional um, where staff have been at that table. As I mentioned earlier, the other support that staff can provide is just making sure agendas and, and minutes are posted. So, you know, as we review these committees, I, you know, I'm, I'm seeing a common thread about, you know, um, increased support, increased communication, and really a general you know, check in on some of these um, high profile committees that have been tabled for us to review that. So I think that that's, um, that's a healthy place to land and some, something that we probably should be looking at as our next step. Great, thank you for that. Councillor, um, Councillor Herger, anything further before I go on to Councillor Hamilton? Not at this time, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hamilton, please. Thank you, Mayor Robinson, and I certainly would welcome Councillor Shea's input as I <laughs> describe where we're at. But as you can see, we started, it's a brand new committee. We started in October, we had our first meeting, and we did have um, a structure of uh, overarching sustainability committee with two subcommittees for waste and climate action. And after a few months of working in that structure, um, it became clear it was feeling a little clunky and was taking up um, it required a lot of resources. We needed three chairs, three vice chairs, and three secretaries, which was taxing on our volunteers. Um, and so at our last sustainability meeting in March, there was, con and, oh, and so by the way, also, there is no current chair of the sustainability committee. Um, uh, the previous chair has stepped down, still on the, on the committee serving, but not wishing to be chair. Um, and so at that meeting, um, you know, the committee made a resolution to council, a recommendation to council that they think a better structure would be to dissolve the sustainability advisory committee and instead have two committees, one being climate action and one being uh, waste reduction. And that would um, better serve um, the energies that the volunteers are bringing. It would bring a clearer scope <laughs> to each of the committees and there certainly is, um, for the volunteers who've stepped up, there's those who are really interested and passionate about waste reduction. And there's those who are really interested about climate action. So it would serve their interests and their talents really well as well. As well. So um, that was just before the pandemic hit that that recommendation came forward. And at that time I did submit it to um, our clerk and CAO and um, did submit uh, revised um, terms of reference perhaps that needs to be revised some more. But I do think this is a good direction for the committee in terms of, of resources and managing ideas. And um, I, I do think it would be helpful for these committees to have the terms of a reference adopted by council before we reconvene. So the committees um, have certainty in their role and that council is behind the, the role that they're seeking. Um, right. But perhaps, Mayor Robinson, may I pass to um, Councillor Shea just to further comment, or if I missed anything, please, through okay. you. Uh, Councillor Shea, and then I know Clerk Sharbeck wants to speak to this. Okay. So Thank go you. ahead, Councillor Shea. No, I think, I think uh, that, that, that historical 
uh, explanation was very uh, accurate and useful. Uh, but I, I did want to just restress what uh, Councillor Hamilton was saying earlier about the fact that this we have declared this as an emergency at Council. Uh, and you know, COVID is also an emergency. But you look at how we're responding to the emergency of COVID, and you look at how we're responding to the emergency of uh, uh, climate change, and there there's an, seems to be an imbalance there. I think that as council, we need to really uh, sort of see this as everyone's job, and that this this lens should uh, uh, percolate through all the departments. So uh, the question of staff support, going back to the question of staff support, it'd be great to have a staff person uh, ad addressing this, but I think it really needs to be introduced into the entire culture of uh, our organization. Thank you. Thank you as well. Quick share back, please. Thank you to your worship. Um, a number of interesting points raised yes. by both Council Shea and Council Hamilton. Um, an important piece to remember is that uh, we are in the midst of a global pandemic and that did change up how um, information and action items move forward for sure. Um, a little bit on the um, terms of reference and staff support. Um, at this point in time, I think everybody knows we, the staff support is valuable to committees and I think it's very important, but we just don't have the staff. And I'm wondering if um, there were specific pieces that uh, a committee needed staff support with um, based on their agenda, which you all have uh, before your committee meetings, but uh, this might be one where perhaps there isn't staff support for every single um, every single meeting for the Sustainable Advisory Committee, but I'm wondering if it would be of value for their next meeting, um, what, whenever that is, um, and perhaps include the subcommittees or as they stand now the subcommittees right if we include that group if i could attend and um perhaps offer some suggestions on how to get these recommendations to council or Good. how to clean up the terms of reference and get those uh, it, there's a few pieces that these three committees the parent committee and the two subcommittees um, there's some pieces that need to get on the council floor for attention and for discussion and for clarity. And I think perhaps as the clerk, I might be able to help facilitate just that piece and then council does whatever council does with it. W would that be fair that if- Great suggestion. Just on, if I could come to a meeting and, and help sort through the steps to get it on the council floor, if that would help. I would defer to our two appointed members, but from my perspective, it's a great suggestion. Um, this can be done through Zoom. Uh, so that there would be an opportunity for, for feedback on this. But I really think that um, if um, the committee members, especially our uh, two appointed members, uh, identified that um, this committee has evolved, has grown, the structure as it currently stands is um, not where they wanna be, not uh, for the further successes. And I do recall the day that uh, the committee representatives were present and provided a very solid work plan for budget consideration. If you remember back for uh, uh, some initiatives, some were tangible, uh, tangibles and uh, certainly success. And then we're looking, looking more for the success of, of this committee and certainly the, uh, the support from, from this council. So with that, um, it, this is obviously what I'm hearing as a keeper. It just needs to um, be structured differently in, in terms of efficient efficiencies and also um, respecting the uh, climate action plan, but the crisis and uh, for tangibles with regard to that. Is there anything further, Councillor Hamilton? Is your hand just up from um, a previous discussion? Well, thank you, Mayor Robinson. I think uh, uh, a meeting facilitated by our clerk would be welcomed. Yes. It would just absolutely welcomed. Um, and um, I'm interested to see, in terms of all our committees, um, I wonder if we've maybe lost a few committee members along the way throughout COVID too. And, and so it'll be interesting to see how many people are interested in coming back to working in the committee model after such a big pause. So we'll find that out as well. Great point. Um, and then just one thought just to pin for another day is our advisory committees, 
how does council, how do we utilize our advisory committees? How do we get policy and ideas to our advisory committees? How does it come back out to council? How does these, these policies get seen and advised on ahead of getting to a council agenda? And what kinds of things are we asking them to advise on? I think um, that kind of clarity was also being sought by um, the sustainability advisory committee. Um, so just a thought in terms of all of our advisory committees, thank you. Great, so Kirk Sherbeck, that's uh, a lot of information that you can impart for, for this particular committee, but I'm gonna suggest that may uh, be worthwhile for many of the other committees. Yes. Okay, so Thank with you. that, I think we're able to, we've got Westbury uh, Sustainability Advisory Committee, really anxious to see how that one will unfold um, uh, very positively, and the two subcommittees of Waste Reduction and Climate Action. Um, so stay tuned one and all for that. Now I'm looking, at West Gray Traffic Safety Working Group as, as the next discussion. And then we have a few more pages. Uh, maybe, just maybe we can get done before 12 noon. Um, sure. Anyway, that's just a bit of a structure. We'll see where, where we land on that. But Madam, uh, Madam Clerk, uh, with the West Gray Traffic Safety Working Group, please. Uh, Your Worship, um, the terms of reference are attached to my report. I think um, uh, my understanding is that this, this working group, and I, I will just say now that whether it's called a working group or a task force or an advisory committee or whatever it is, it's a committee as far as the Municipal Act is concerned. Yeah. So that there's still those same requirements. So this group I think is working towards completing their mandate at this time is perhaps on the finishing end of that and soon to be reporting back to council. And um, perhaps the members um, that sit on this group could, could update us on this. I don't yeah. wanna get into what exactly they're working on, just where they're at in their mandate that I, I think council should expect to hear um, sort of a wrap up report back from this committee soon. Yeah, so that's my understanding. Uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, do you have any comment on this? Thank you, Mayor Robinson. Yes, we do have, um, well, we, we lost some time with COVID-19 like everyone else. So, but we're, we're back up and I think we've had three meetings since uh, returning. Um, we have two or three items that uh, we'll probably be bringing forward. I know we're gonna speak on behalf of Council Townsend. He's got some fresh uh, information coming to next, meet, next week's meeting. Uh, other than that, we've identified uh, several key areas that are concerned that we've been shared with staff as well as the uh, police chief. So hopefully we'll have our mandate uh, completed and we should be able to bring um, a complete uh, presentation for it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Townsend, please. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to comment on a process that um, also I think we need to look at when it comes to committees uh, when we start off. Um, and that uh, I'm, I'm saying that because I think um, Clerk Sherbeck was not here when the um, traffic safety working group was established. It was actually approved in October and it was given a six month mandate. And we did not even have um, the request for members come out for a few months after that. The idea was to group the requests because a lot of committees needed a lot of members. And so when you have a short term working group, you have less flexibility on waiting, if you will. So obviously our mandate timeframe got extended. We managed to have one full committee meeting um, other than talking about terms of reference basically uh, before COVID. And we were one of the last committees to actually come forward, although there's still a few that are not active. But the real challenge was I'm trying to say that we have not had a lot of time to do it, but what we've done, we've done very well, I think. We are on the cusp of coming through with some recommendations and um, we hope to uh, review those at our next meeting. And that's information coming back, feedback and um, summaries from the police chief because he's obviously involved and so is the um, director of infrastructure. Um, however, as I mentioned, the council there is an opportunity to get funding through an MTO program. That has to be a public uh, committee. It cannot be council. It cannot be the municipality that receives that funding. 
So for the purpose of moving forward with um, implementation, if we want to take advantage of funding, we may for all purposes leave that committee or working group in, in place. Um, so it will have fulfilled the mandate of defining some actions, whether that's adequate or whether we continue, I think will be part of the recommendation that comes out from the group. That's number one. Number two is once we get an idea of the funding um, reality possibility, which sounds really, really good, I would hate to think that we just shut it down and lose that opportunity. Um, that does not mean that the committee would meet as often. It does not mean we'd be doing the implementation and the person at MTO I spoke to knows that. So I can't give you a specific time frame until all those things are, are held. Um, and the, uh, the chair is fully involved in all these conversations. Um, but again, I'm just bringing it all back here. So that gives, I think, a better feeling as to where we are on that committee. Well, oh, thank you, Councillor Townsend. And I think this uh, committee has come too far um, to just shut it down right now. I mean, that's the whole purpose. We uh, had specific goals that we were trying to achieve with uh, establishing this committee. And I, I think uh, both you and uh, Deputy Mayor have raised some uh, very um, valid points. So with that, I would say is, this is a move on committee. Um, but I do see Councillor Hamilton and, Count, and uh, Clerk Sharback that we <coughs> speak. So um, I'm going to go first to Clerk Sharback for uh, obviously any clarity and then Councillor Hamilton, please. Go ahead. Um, thank you, Chair, Your Worship. I guess what I'm understanding is um, this group is working through their mandate mm -hmm. and uh, COVID has certainly put an impact in that and lengthen the time frame, And I think that's understandable. And the next couple of committees, I would say, um, are on hold to get ready to move forward that um, it, because of COVID, they didn't get off the ground. But as far as the traffic advisory group goes, I, I would suggest that um, if there's a funding application being considered, that it might be important to have a conversation with um, a director of finance about that. Um, this committee is indeed the municipality. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. it's not a, a community group. Um, so there, there might be terminology it in that application that we need to just consider and be careful of. Okay. I understand Good. that MTO, because it has public um, participation, um, have indicated that it would be satisfactory that way. But of course, we always go through the treasurer before any application or any consideration for an application has gone there. So good. Yep, we know that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so that's good. Your hands down to put your back on this. You're good. Good. Okay. So the next two committees like um, Quirk back had just identified the West Curry Youth Advisory Committee and the West Curry Trails Committee. Just let's see if there was any other one. Yeah, for those two, um, they were approved by council. Uh, there was, the, if not unanimous, it was an overwhelming majority uh, for the uh, establishment of these committees. And uh, due to COVID, there wasn't um, a lot of activity to date. Um, I see um, Youth Advisory Committee, the Youth Committee and Trails significant to West Gray and our communities. And uh, I think it's important. I do know that there's individuals that are excited to be on um, the Youth Advisory Committee. I've heard from youth and I've heard from, from their parents or their guardians and uh, that are, are anxious to get going on that. And we do have the um, council members appointed to that particular one. And I'm just going to double up here, if you don't mind, members of committee. Uh, West Gray Trails Committee, it's, I see this as very important. And whether we dovetail in with others, other resources or then start uh, um, uh, seeking a citizen appointees, but I do know that Councillor Hutchinson has been working very hard on this. And uh, this um, committee certainly will enhance the vibrancy of uh, West Gray overall. Okay, Councillor Hutchinson, what a great segue. Yeah, so um, I, I hope that we uh, keep this committee because we really haven't 
got off the ground. Uh, I've been doing some legwork and whatnot, but I think it's a type of committee that, as far as I'm concerned, uh, we can't really go anywhere unless we have some funds attached to it. Um, there's things that need to be done. Uh, I know I've been um, talking with um, Jeff Shea and, and the accessibility committee that they may be looking at some funding. Uh, I don't know whether that's the direction they're gonna go. They're gonna have a meeting about it. Um, and I've also talked to um, our staff about uh, the resiliency fund that's available uh, that trails fits under that umbrella. So, uh, and then we have to look at budget. So, you know, if we come up with some funds then uh, obviously I think that that would be the point. I think if we have some funds that we would uh, push to get more members because right now we, we didn't really have any success getting members. I think there was actually one member come forward, but we haven't, we haven't really met or anything. So um, I, that was sort of a hope, um, the direction we're gonna go. Um, I've been talking with the county and uh, Mr. Zawinski, uh, we've been talking with the county about getting some, uh, doing some data points because we have some um, time there. And uh, so we're in the process of looking at doing that so that we at least get them uh, laid out and then we know what we have to deal with in terms of signage and, and gates, control gates and, and so on. So um, yeah. so yeah, that's sort of where we're at and um, hopefully we'll get to move forward. Well, I, I, uh, I agree. I think these are two essential committees that uh, we need to uh, get moving on and I think they'll contribute overall to uh, the, um, the well, I want to say the essence of our community, but certainly um, what our communities are all about. And uh, it's focusing our, on our youth that are, um, are going to be very soon leaders of our community. And I think the connection with the, the youth is really important. It's part of our strategic vision plan. And so is the trails committee. So I just, I put those two together because they're um, so important. Uh, Clerk Sharbeck, please. Thank you for your worship. I guess what I'm understanding is that um, and I just want to confirm that it's the general consensus that uh, these two committees, because of uh, their timing and COVID's timing, we just leave alone for now. And at least in the new year, look at um, recruiting members for these committees and moving forward and allowing them to tackle their mandate before there's any decision to um, make changes, I yeah. guess, to where we're at. So I guess they're kind of on hold until the new year, but they're um, keep and work towards uh, filling the seats. Very good. Is that fair? Yes, I would okay. suggest that is, and I do know that we've got Councillor Shea and Councillor Townsend that are on the youth committee, along with myself, and we have Councillor Hutchinson on the trails uh, committee. All right, uh, Councillor Herger, please. Yes, thank you. Um, well, I see both of those as keep committees. I wonder if there's merit in having online youth uh, meetings this year. Yes. Yeah. Our youth are most adventurous and the computer is not a challenge for a lot of them. Many organizations are heading online if they haven't been online all year. So um, I think there's merit in moving forward before the beginning of the year with the youth committee um, it is a committee of council. Like, let's let's see the action of the committee. Um, to the to the point of Councillor Hutchison regarding trails, a lot of the trails that we already have in West Gray um, were created with uh, no taxpayer money. They were done actually with generous volunteers and generous donors within the community. Have we sought out uh, community donations on trails? And I recognize that there is a uh, strong municipal component here when we talk about signage and, um, and, and daily or weekly inspections for insurance. But I'm curious, um, have, have you been investigating um, other opportunities outside of government funding for uh, the development of the trails? So Councillor Hutchinson, do you just wanna, if you're okay, just to quickly summarize, but we do have I'm seeing consensus for these two committees so that we can um, move on. Oh, sorry, sorry. I've just been told, thank you very much for that question, Councillor Herger. Um, I'm going to defer to the clerk on that right now rather than interpret her response. Clerk Sherbert, could you uh, provide a, uh, a response and then I guess we'll move on to the next committee. Sorry, okay. Councillor Hutchinson. Um, 
Thank you, Councillor Herbert, for those questions. They are good questions. I'm just concerned that um, I, I know staff is always uh, looking for grants that we might be eligible for, whether that be for a bridge or a trail or a, a, an accessible um, ramp, whatever it may be. We're always on the lookout and we always um, mm -hmm. certainly look for those. But at this time, the committee hasn't done, done that, that work other than perhaps Councillor Hutchinson has uh, kept his eyes open for those things as well. Um, but without any members, uh, there isn't any meetings or quorum or uh, any work yet to happen for these two committees. So I, I think um, keep and move forward. And I agree that yeah. um, perhaps COVID is lasting a lot longer than anybody expected. And our numbers are going up every day and the new normal is we need to find ways to move on. And uh, yeah, the youth committee is definitely not gonna have a problem with yeah. the electronic participation for sure. So I, I think we have some uh, a fresh look at those options. Very good, and I thank you for that response. I'm wondering, um, can we move on to quarter revision? Councillor Hergert? Well, I have another question. What are staff doing to ensure that the trails that we already have are signed and maintained daily, weekly, as required by our insurance company? What are staff doing with the already existing trails that we have? Quick share back. Is that for another day? I um, actually don't have uh, just the details from that department to respond with. Okay. But I think that um, perhaps uh, we have a couple of staff members that might collaborate on a report back. That sounds good. On that information and just clarify how, what, what are we doing and to what extent. And we've had that uh, because discussion it's important before. For the insurance and for, yeah. I guess, all community safety really and risk management for the corporation. So we've sure. had that discussion before, and I thought there might have been a pending report. So I'm just going over to Madam, uh, Madam CAO. Um, I think there was something we were going to have that discussion in relation to uh, insurance. I wonder if you could shed some light, please. Yes, through Madam Mayor, I have confirmed with the treasurer that a report is coming okay. um, for insurance purposes, and I will speak with the Director of Public Works if he can uh, assist with that on the trails piece. Wonderful. Okay, there you go. Asked and Thank answered. You. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, well, it's 10 after 12. We, we, okay. We have spent the whole morning on this. Let's, let's um, move ahead. And we've, we've just got a page and a half on this. And then let's, uh, I'm going to suggest if you're all uh, interested, let's have a bit of a break for lunch and then let's uh, deal with the rest of our agenda. Uh, good discussion. Um, you know, and, and this was a necessary discussion. For sure. All right. Uh, having said that, I want to stop uh, talking so that we can move ahead. Court of revision, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Your Worship. The court of revision really isn't up for much discussion today. We don't have a court of revision appointed until we have a municipal drain um, that requires a court of revision to be held. The um, it's not wise to appoint one beforehand. That deals with all of uh, the drainage reports coming forward. Uh, it's best to have one appointed as uh, when necessary. And it will at that time be three or five members of council or a member of the public who's eligible to be on council. So that's something to deal with when we get into um, a drainage matter and have a report from our drainage engineer. There's quite a process under the drainage act. When it's time to schedule a court of revision, I would recommend then that um, we gather for about an hour, perhaps an hour before the regular council meeting and have uh, a bit of a training session and a discussion about the drainage act and the court of revision rule. Okay. Um, so that's about it for that. There's really no action today. Okay. And uh, I, I think our members of council are fine. I'm not seeing any, any hands on the dashboard. And, and I, I think that's something that uh, to be determined to be continued. Okay, thank you for that thorough report on that one. 
I see local boards, um, Durham Cemetery Board. I scroll down, I see Union Cemetery Board. That's the only two. Yes. Okay. Um, so through you, Your Worship, the cemetery boards have a very specific role to play. And um, they are operating under the authority of the Funeral, Burial and Cremation Services Act. So they're, they're providing a really valuable service right now to the municipality. I know council doesn't hear a lot from them. They're just doing what they need to do with the operation of the cemeteries and perhaps an annual report. Um, um, I could bring forward some information from those boards for council. Um, so I would recommend just, um, it's working really well to get that cemetery work done and let them continue overseeing the operations. Well, thank you, Court um, Trevor. Can I do know that Kelsey Townsend serves on the Durham Cemetery Board uh, his hand is up, so let's go to him and then Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Townsend. Yeah, actually, um, the uh, uh, the committee or the board um, owes a lot of thanks to um, to uh, Ms. Webb, who is doing all the uh, the background work and uh, puts our meetings together. I just like to see them start up again and move forward. There are things that needed to be done. The emergency group control group had already approved it. And uh, right now we've done some voting on email, which probably isn't appropriate, but the trick is the work needs to get done before the ground got too hard, et cetera. And so they're moving forward with it, but we've, we've worked around it. We'll take the flack if that's what, <laughs> what we should be taking, but uh, certain things do need to happen. So, but I, I am interested yeah. in hearing as is the chair, uh, Rob Thompson. Okay. And I, I do want to acknowledge um, Heather Webb's uh, amazing contribution um administrative uh contribution to the um her, her work with the uh, durham cemetery board for certain okay thank you uh for bringing that to light uh councillor townsend councillor hutchinson please yeah i'm just curious with the um uh with the cemetery boards um i don't remember seeing minutes um do they do minutes and are they covered in for insurance under our municipality for the committee Work. Thank you for following the criteria there, Councillor Hutchinson. Quick share, mm -hmm. please. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, my understanding is that Mrs. Webb takes the minutes for these. I'm not sure. I think she does a, a big piece of the administrative part for the cemetery operations and for the cemetery boards. Okay. Um, I'm not sure, but I can uh, bring back a little bit more information on that. Let me see. Uh, when we do the follow up to this committee. Appreciate that. Councillor Townsend, are you able to respond to that? Uh, yes, I am. We do, we do have minutes and uh, we meet about three or four times a year, uh, unless there's something that comes up that we need to deal with unexpectedly, which doesn't normally happen. Um, but it's in that time frame, and yes, there are minutes done of each one. Great. And I appreciate seeing your thumbs up on the uh, board as well. Now, so Councillor Hutchinson, your hand yeah. is up. So the minutes don't come to council then? Sure, I'm, I'm not sure if they have, and it might just have been um, a communication problem. They're not, a, the boards don't meet frequently as, as Councillor Townsend has a, um, shared with us. So it's few and far between times the minutes would be approved and brought to council, but I can follow up um, with both of those boards and uh, we can just do a reminder because I know they have the minutes. And if it's a matter of sharing them with council, that's fine. I think COVID has had a significant impact on their meeting. Um, a lot of the members um, are taking care in COVID. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I think we can make sure they come to council in the future. And I think they have in the past, but it's probably been some time. So definitely yeah. a follow-up. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't remember seeing them in the past, um, but maybe, maybe I've forgotten. Um, but I just think it, if it's going to follow the same protocol as other committees, if they're a committee of council, then their minutes should come to, to council. Um, otherwise, if they don't, okay. then why should other committee co come to council? So I'm just, just my thought. Um, I, I just like my experience. I've been on the, I'm on McNeil cemetery board, um, a cemetery I have been for a couple terms and, um, we do minutes, but I mean, it, it's, it's looked after themselves whereas these ones are looked after 
uh, through the municipality because they don't have uh, the people to look after themselves. So um, I just think it's only fair that we probably should see those minutes um, since they are a um, member of our committee of council. Thank you. Very good. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for that. And I know our, our clerk has responded, but also taking note on that. I appreciate it. We are on the home stretch. We've got joint boards operational pursuant to agreements of which there are three, Elmwood Community Center Board, Elmwood Fire Department, Board of Management and Stoddard Hall. Uh, clerk Sharbeck, uh, I'm suggesting that maybe Stoddard Hall we've already addressed. Yes. So that that has been taken care of. So with respect to Elmwood Community Center Board and Elmwood Fire Department Board of Management. Clerk Sharbeck, please. Okay, thank you, Your Worship. These joint boards are operating pursuant to agreements with um, our neighbors, Brockton, and uh, the Stoddart Hall is in agreement with Gray Highlands, so they're really not up for dibs today to do anything with. We are bound by those agreements, and when it's time to revisit those agreements, um, then, then we'll bring it all forward and the value of them. My understanding is they're working well, and the agreements are working well, and they're serving both communities well. So there's really... Um, nothing to go forward with, although we will be having a meeting with um, Gray Highlands um, clerk or representatives and those, those board members to have a look at that hall board and it, how it's functioning or do we renew the agreement or what's going on there. So I think we've established that already uh -huh. and we are done. Um, <laughs> that report, uh, I would say that there's a lot of follow-up work to be done. And I do appreciate the uh, Committee of the Whole taking the time to go through these committees. I think it's an important discussion. And I think it's very important that um, council is aware of who's doing what in, in your name, right? Mm -hmm. So moving forward, there is a lot of work to do. Some of it will um, perhaps be a bit slow going with COVID. But uh, I would ask for patience as, as we work through these steps and bring back um, the next set of information or, or compiled information for your review. Well, thank you, Quick Shabak. Before we, um, I, I just generated like a huge list of questions. Um, but I do want to say we have a move by Councillor Hamilton, second by Councillor Townsend. Uh, a motion on the floor. So before we break for lunch, I'll be uh, calling the vote on that uh, after uh, Cliff Sharbeck would read that motion at hand. But I do want to say, I want to take the time right now uh, to acknowledge um, Cliff Sharbeck. So I want to look at you directly, but thank you very, very much for, for this report. It's a comprehensive report. It's been over uh, two meetings that we've had uh, detailed discussion. Uh, it was certainly, um, uh, worthwhile and needed to uh, clarify our structure, uh, moving our process forward, um, respecting our citizens, respecting heritage committees, uh, and just making sure that we are efficient and effective. Um, getting the input from our volunteer uh, committee members and uh, finding out, um, you know, what improvements we need to make to be continued, of course. And this still has to be ratified by council, but. Uh, Clerk Sharbeck, extremely well done on this comprehensive report, and we really appreciate the, the detail in your presentation, which was equally comprehensive uh, in, in the presentation, and, and I really respect the quality of your work. Thank you very, very much. I, I needed to say that from the chair pos uh, position for sure. So having said that, I see Councillor Townsend, Councillor Hutchinson, Councillor Hamilton, Councillor Herbert. Councillor Townsend, please. Yes, thank you. Um, three items very quickly. SMART, Saugie Municipal Airport are not listed, so I'd like to know how we address those. And the other one is um, at the beginning of this discussion, I had mentioned the Committee of Adjustment. Yes. Because so, uh, yep. I talked about the five instead of three that we uh, talked about last time. Yep. And also the uh, during that same council meeting, uh, Councillor Hutchinson had suggested maybe we leave it at seven. So that discussion has not been completed yet either. Agreed. And I, um, Clerk Sharpeck, I'm going to toss over, uh, mm -hmm. toss this over to you if I might. But um, I believe it was a notice of motion with yes. regard to the committee of adjustment. 
that, uh, is that right? See what, yes. So you had a notice of motion counselor that will be coming on the uh, council agenda, uh, but I'll uh, absolutely defer to the clerk. And with regard to the um, Soggy Municipal Airport Commission or Authority, by the way, that for me, the title, if we could just have that clarified and um, uh, SMART as well. So quick share back on all of these student questions and comments from Councillor Townsend. Could you please respond? For sure. Thank you for those questions, Councillor Townsend. Yes. Um, the Committee of Adjustment, first off, um, I believe you had submitted a notice of motion. That notice of motion is on the draft agenda for December 1st at this point in time. So that discussion about Committee of Adjustment membership, whether it's three or five or seven, um, mm -hmm. is going to be um, addressed right at council. So rather than another um, committee of the whole recommendation to council, I think it, it was the one piece out of our last committee of the whole meeting that uh, was pulled out of those committee of the whole minutes for council to address directly. Yes. And it will be um, a notice of motion on our next agenda. Thank you. Um, as far as uh, SMART uh, or the airport, those are external agencies. We do not have control of them. We're invited to appoint a member of council to them. So that's where we're at. They tell us um, how many members we can appoint and uh, we do that, but we don't have any control over that group's mandate. We're, we're just allowed a seat at the table. So that's why they're not in, included in our review today. Does that help clarify? Yes, it does. The, the clarification would be, um, do we want to remain in those groups? And is that discussion appropriate for here or elsewhere? If, if we were to entertain one, should that discussion happen here or elsewhere? Um, I, do you mean, uh, do we continue taking part in those external groups? Yes. And agencies? Yes. Um, I, I think that's a, I think that's a different discussion. Yeah. And uh, I think I would want to have those external agencies, I would want to have the same information before you that I have for our own committees today, because it's hard for council to discuss when, if they aren't the member who's had involvement with the airport or was smart, um, there's some pieces missing for the information. And, um, yeah, I, I think that's another discussion. So I would leave it at council's um, or committee of the whole's direction or uh, request that council have staff investigate that further if that's council's wish to proceed that way. I, okay. That's Anything the answer further? I expected from you, but again, for completeness, I wanted to make sure that discussion was had in the public. So thank you. Thank you as well. Councillor Hutchinson, please. So just a question regarding um, the uh, committees. Um, it says that there were attachments uh, uh, there of, of all the terms of reference and whatnot. And, and I, I don't see how we get to those attachments. And, and I'm not saying that they shouldn't be in the package because it would make it that much longer, but um, maybe some links that we could go to those terms of reference. I'm, I'm just not sure. It says in your in the committee reports there that it says uh, okay. see attached and I there's a listing at the bottom of the committees, but I don't see any way of getting to those without referring back to previous copies. Look sure back. Ashley, that's a good point. I yeah. don't know if all the attachments were attached. They were attached to the last committee of the whole agenda. And I think we tucked in my previous report to continue on. And I don't think we actually attached all the attachments. So it wasn't an intentional trick <laughs> or hiding them from you, but we can um, make sure that on the website, this package is updated and they are attached. So if any members of the public or council want to revisit that, what we'll have to do is unpublish it and republish it to the website. But um, I can also email out um, those attachments if anybody would, is it, 
the committee wish that I email out that previous report with all the attachments with it. And I do apologize. Well, it's oversight. Well, no, I'm not, no, I'm not saying that we need to see them again. If they were in the last bags, that's fine. I'm just curious though, um, could we, because I looked at the HTML uh, copy and, and there's a uh, link that you can go to and for more information. Is it possible that in future agendas that we just make links rather than attach, rather than putting them into the agenda package? And that way you can refer to them if you wish to. And if you've, you've already seen it or don't have any questions, you don't have to go there. It just makes it maybe makes the agenda package a little smaller. Yes. So always on our council and committee of the whole agendas online, there's an HTML version and a PDF version. So the PDF version has every page uh, that you scroll through from beginning to end. So every page of those attachments would be included. And the HTML version, you'll see, you can see the agenda and anything that you can click on will lead you to that report. And then you'll see the links to any attachments to that report, whether it's mine or, or another manager's reports. So often the HTML version on the website is the easiest to quickly find the page you're looking for or the exact report or the exact um, piece of correspondence perhaps because you can see they're all laid out on the agenda without any scrolling and just click on the one you want. Okay, so so for I usually uh, download the agenda to my uh, Adobe, but I wouldn't be able to do that if um, um, with that. So that's, that's maybe a training thing or whatever. Like, obviously I'm going to look at the HTML now and see if that works better for me, but, um, just, uh, just a point, um, no problem. We can talk again about that. Okay. And I do want to remind members of council that we are still having the website training, uh, that is, uh, coming up and I'll look to, uh, Madam CAO just to send out that, um, that email with, uh, when that is taking place. And as we discussed before, that would be a, a time when also citizens um, can be part of that training because the, the more people we know how to use our, our new website, the better for sure, as it would be hopefully a go-to spot for, for information is um, sufficient, of course. Okay, Councillor Townsend, Councillor Hamilton, Councillor Herger. Councillor Townsend, please. Sorry, I forgot to take my hand down. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you, <laughs> Councillor Hamilton then. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. I'll, I'll keep it brief. I'm just wondering in terms of um, next steps our clerk's going to take, if you could just summarize what, what we should, ex uh, your next steps are and um, when you expect we might revisit this discussion. And before you summarize, if I may ask, uh, are you or will you include a survey to all our committee members? And would it be appropriate and useful to have a survey for council? Is that an appropriate way to gather some of the more detailed feedback? I know we kept wanting to take a deeper dive and we we're getting a little off track today and I appreciate how you kept bringing us back to focus. But I think um, council does still have some um, ideas for, for improving committees or, and, and would a survey help capture those ideas and you could bring them back to us in a report, for example. Thank you, clerk. I really like that idea, quite frankly, but I, I looked to Madam uh, Clerk to see if that's appropriate. You wish to deal with that. <laughs> Thank you, Your Worship. <laughs> I, I like the idea of a yeah. survey, and I think, um, I guess what I had sort of envisioned for next steps, we have a long list of um, next mm -hmm. steps, and I hope Lindsay has uh, got a lot of them written down for me, because <laughs> I've got a <laughs> some written down and Laura has some written down and Lindsay okay. has some written down. Yeah. So our next step as staff is to compile our next steps. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, yeah. um, I, how would you think about a survey specific for each committee? So very general questions for all of them, but maybe a couple on point questions for that mm -hmm. committee and their subcommittees would all be inclusive as one. Mm -hmm. And um, if if council members um, had could take part in that as well, they could make those specific comments or suggestions or questions related to that specific committee because we didn't get a chance to delve into um, a lot of the details of the boots on the ground work our committees are doing. Mm -hmm. It was more to, more of a have a look at the mandate and how how they serve council. 
So awesome. yes, a little bit digger deep, or deep, deeper day. It's almost lunchtime. <laughs> I'm taking that as a, a cue. That must be a sign. Yeah. But, but I, I guess developing that and reaching out to those committees, yeah. um, perhaps um, with a phone call first for their chair is what I'd like to do, or a Zoom call, and give them a heads up that a survey is coming, just mm -hmm. with a few questions. And I'd like to, uh, I think, short and sweet is the best way to do a survey and see what we get. Mm -hmm. And does it lead to more questions that we need to sort out? Because often they do. Uh -huh. And I think it's um, one step at a time. And uh, pulling this information together from the group. So it's, I guess, us as staff uh -huh. um, gathering our, our thoughts and making a plan on how best to approach these communication pieces. But I do like the idea of a survey. And we'll, um, I guess, play with some ideas on that about how best to make that work for our committee groups and for council as well to allow that um, more specific look. Yeah. Okay. Great, and I think this is great. And, and the you. discussion has been really good. The one final um, part to our uh, to just put closure on this for at least for this discussion is the motion at hand, which kind of um, puts an, um, let's see, uh, 360 on where we're going to go next uh, through the recommendation of this committee. So before I um, have the clerk read the motion, because as I was looking on my page here, two other hands popped up on, on the screen. So before uh, we have the motion read and voted on, there are two more members of uh, council that wish to speak on this particular item. Councillor Shea. Thank you. Uh, we kind of mashed this this item together with the uh, discussion about insurance, and we determined that insurance was not applicable to people like the uh, Music in the Park group. Uh, but I just wanted to confirm that all of our other committees are covered by our insurance, like our Accessibility Advisory Committee uh, is is properly covered by insurance, uh, I, I understand. Clerk Sherbeck. Yes, uh, I would say that uh, that's being on Councillor Shea. Um, I think the ones uh, that we're reaching out to, there were some hall committees yeah. and um, music, in music in the park that were kind of identified as ones that um, we could reach out and talk about other options, how they could, how we could support them in doing what they like to do and what they do well. But yes, our other committees are certainly under that overreaching umbrella of municipal insurance and they don't need the facility user piece. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you, Kelsa Herger. Thank you. Um, so I have um, probably a recommendation recommendation to council immediately after this vote, but I do appreciate that um, Councillor Townsend brought up Smart uh, Soggy Municipal Airport. Um, those two are operating under different agreements. We should understand our agreement, and as council, we should reaffirm that these are beneficial to West Gray. And the work that's being done is the work that we actually, as West Gray, have prioritized as being important to our community. So I will wait for this, um, this vote to happen, but then I will be asking for uh, the, the request for staff to investigate further some specifics of those two, especially as the changes um, in transit have been occurring over the last few years. I think it's important to, um, to reaffirm our agreement or and or to have an effective operating agreement in which we operate under. I know that the airport agreement was several years out of date and SMART has changed a great deal even in the last year as now Gray County has its own transit. So I think it is important, um, but I'll speak to that after, after our vote. Thank you. Okay, so we've cleared the dashboard. So Clerk Sharbeck, could you please read the motion at hand, which is in regards to 3.1.1, Committees of Council Review, um, that being your report. Moved by Councillor Hamilton, seconded by Councillor Townsend. Thank you, Your Worship. The um, motion is that the Municipality of West Ray Committee of the Whole receives the report from Clerk Sharbeck regarding Committees of Council Review and provides direction regarding amendments to the appointment bylaw. Lots of discussion and lots of contribution to um, you know, the, the fate of our committees and the structure. All those in favor signify with a check mark, those opposed with an X mark.
As I call your name, please state your name and how you're voting. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson in favor. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Councillor Hergert. Councillor Hergert, yes. Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend in favor. Motion has carried. Please clear your dashboard. Thank you. Councillor Hergert, you identified that you, uh, you have something to say at this point? Yes, I would like to uh, recommend to Council that, um, that the Committee of the Whole request further investigation into our joint agreements with SMART and the uh, Soggy Municipal Air Airport Commission, including mandate number of meetings for 2019, the cost of that um, agreement. It could be the budget plus the council representation. Um, anyway, including the benefit that it provides and serves to West Gray and our strategic plan. And any outdated agreements would be updated. Is there a seconder for this motion? Councillor Townsend, you have your hand up. What does that mean? Is that a question? No, it means I would second the motion. Oh, okay. Check marks. Okay. Okay. Um, I do see it's Hergert has moved a motion, seconded by Councillor Townsend. Um, Councillor Hergert, could you just restate your motion so that the uh, clerk can uh, record it accordingly? Yes, that the committee of the whole would request staff investigate further the mandate of SMART and Saugeen Municipal Airport Authority, including the number of meetings, the cost of the entire agreement and council attendance, as well as the benefit to West Gray and any outdated agreements would be brought forward to council for renew agreement, renewed agreements. Okay, so just take a pause. I, I think I'm... Okay, so what I I'm think just... we just need to recap with staff here on some of us all captured some of those words. Yeah, but okay. I really don't have a, a resolution put together here. So, Lindsay, could, could you tell me? One moment, please. So, um, I'm wondering if Administrative Assistant Lindsay Glazier could please read into the record what you have so far, and then I'll go to the mover and second. Sure. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, um, the recommendation is that Committee of the Whole recommend to Council that staff investigate further the mandate of the SMART and the Saudi Municipal Airport, including the mandate, the number of meetings in 2019, the cost of the entire agreement, Council attendance, uh, and I believe it was the benefit to the Municipality of West Gray, and any outdated agreement that it would be brought forward to Council for review. And also the strategic plan was mentioned at, in the original yeah. motion. Okay, as mover of the motion, does that capture your wording, uh, Councillor Herger? As long as we got, um, you know, the reference to the strategic plan, how it, how it benefits West Gray. Yeah, yeah, I just said that at the end there. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Townsend, does that reflect what you want to second? Yes, it does, thank you. Okay. Brooke Sharbeck, are, are we ready to go if I call the vote in terms of process on e-scribe for recording the <laughs> language? I, I think just give us one moment. Here yeah, okay. To, to get the administrative piece caught up. Okay. So uh, this was a bit unexpected, right? Yeah. So, so please, uh, with your indulgence, uh, committee members, when we're using eScribe, it takes a minute. We need to get it into the system as it generates the minutes. 
before we can move on to the next process. That is just in a nutshell how I'm going to describe it right now. So staff just need a moment to get it into eScribe and then I will call the vote. Um, I'm, yeah, I guess that's a good question. Is this a direct motion or is this a notice of motion or I'm not, I I think I'm missing a piece on this. Okay, so you're looking for clarity. Like when we're yeah. in committee of the whole, is there an ability to create um, other recommendations or is, does it's, this have um, to be handled differently? I defer to you first. Is it appropriately on the floor and or? No, I don't no it's not an amendment to the former recommendation that recommendation is voted on i guess this would be um at the discretion of the committee uh to proceed so if it's the committee's will to have a vote on a direct motion at this time and i guess this is i, I just want to clarify that the wording is that the committee of the whole recommends to council so is that is that clear, Councillor Herbert? That this is a recommendation yeah, that, council, that yeah. council then proceeds with the next step. So, okay. Yeah, I guess call the vote. Okay, so we've got the language already confirmed through Councillor Herbert and Councillor Townsend, but I want to know where we had just left it. Are we at a stage now that our administrative assistant has included it in, yes. in, in the software? And where it's, and it's not even about e-scribe if we were doing this with um chalk and a slate it still takes time to down words oh, that just sure. come out of left field oh, so it, it is yeah. about just recording it correctly because uh when you get your minutes back you want to know that your intention is is correctly reflected in the words so that takes a bit of time regardless of what form we're using but i think it looks like uh the signs are we're good to go so for vote. just for clarity that is it with high respect in terms of wordsmithing and recording it through the clerk's office. But, but we did identify that in our process that it does take some time with regard to the software. So I know we need the proper link for the motion at hand, but we also have to include it uh, in the process that we're using. So Clerk Sharbeck, you're saying that the motion is appropriately on the floor um, with that. If you're saying it's appropriately on the floor, then I will call the vote. I want to check with you before I do that. I guess it's on the floor and it's been moved and seconded. Mm -hmm. So it, it's um, the committee's place to go forward with that. Okay. And uh, as they see fit, Good. for sure. Thank you for that. Now I do see there are two members of council that have their hand up, Councillor Hutchinson and Councillor Hamilton, beginning with Councillor Hutchinson. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering um, whether we're, if this is necessary, I mean, I'm not really against it, but uh, given that uh, when we get into budget, we will probably have, and we have in the past, delegations from SMART and the airport regarding their budget request. So I'm just wondering if that's maybe the time that we should have this discussion, because at that point, we'll know what they're asking for money, and then we'll have some facts and figures. I'm just wondering if if we're doing some the staff would have to do some extra work when the group coming to council would already have a lot of this information for us. Yeah. Um, so that's that's my comment, my my thoughts. Yeah, and I would agree with that. I, I think we've got um, council uh, members that have been duly um, appointed to uh, both of these uh, committees, Smart and the Airport Authority. In fact, we have a new member. Uh, for uh, the airport authority. And I know that the relationship has very much improved for the airport authority uh, with, uh, with Deputy Mayor Hutchinson on it. And I also know that Councillor Hamilton has done some fine work on the uh, SMART um, uh, Soggy Municipal um, Transit Advisory. What is that, SMART? Soggy Municipal uh, Advisory Transit. I think I'm missing something. Councillor Hamilton, help me out here. And regional tra transit. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. I didn't go as far as I needed to for the global aspect at the regional level. Uh, so, um, so that that is my my perspective as well, Councillor Hutchinson. On it. anything further as I go down the list? No, not for me. Thanks. 
All right, thank you, thank Councillor you. Hamilton then. Oh, thank you, Mayor Robinson. I appreciate the opportunity to have this discussion. Um, I think my question to the mover and seconder are, would you like to put a time frame on, on the report just so uh, we have a sense of um, uh, staff's ability to deliver the report and, and what your expectations are as to when you'd like this conversation to happen. Um, Councillor so Herger. Uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Councillor Herger, did you have a sense of time frame? Well, I believe that this is uh, more important than um, than leaving it to a budget moment. I believe at a budget moment, we could be January, February, March, April in, of 2020 is when we did this year. So I think there is um, more of a sense of, this isn't a budget discussion. This is a, a mandate and um, a reaffirmation that we are in a position to continue. So I bring this up because I know that the airport um, joint agreement is several years old. And I also recall that the agreement is um, up for renewal January of each year. So that if we decided we did not wish to continue under the same mandate or, or the same um, you know, organizational structure, that we would be able to give notice timely that um, we don't waste money budget year after budget year. So I also think it's important to have the discussion pre-budget because yes, we will get a delegation from the, uh, the organization, whether it be SMART or the SMA. However, there's a lot more digging behind a budget that needs to be done. And so, um, while it would be nice to just push it off till budget or post budget, um, I do believe that it should be done rather swiftly I also say that thinking our clerk has done an amazing job on this report. There's been a tremendous amount of work behind the scenes, I can tell that. And it also goes to exactly what the clerk read in each and every um, mandate of, of the committees of council. So I think it's very important that we reaffirm our um, our agreement with the nature and intent of each of these organizations. SMART has had several transitions in the last year, including another duplication of transit in Gray County. So I think it is very important. The county level for Bruce County is looking at transportation, but they're not including airports. Wyerton Keppel is having, Wyerton Keppel Airport is having a public meeting tonight about whether or not they can sustain an airport as a single tier, single lower tier. I think it's important to note how much money these other organizations cost. And I also think it's important to review if this is a strategic priority of West Gray or if our priorities have realigned and we should be funding other items that really further our strategic mandate that we've come up with as council. Okay. So I, I don't see that uh, transportation and transportation network is included in our strategic plan. And I question what money and resources we spend on them if they're not actually a strategic priority within our West Gray action plan. So um, I do believe it's a pretty budget discussion that will affect budget most, most certainly but it also affects the priorities and resources that we as West Gray Council deem important within our community. So thank you very much for the time. Yep, thank you, Councillor Hergert. I do see that we have three other members of council. Um, yeah, that, uh, okay, so one other now. Thanks for dropping your hands because I thought, I thought specifically you all had an opportunity to speak on that one. Councillor Townsend, please. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, one of the reasons I seconded the motion is because I asked the question about them initially. So it shows you I have some similar thoughts to Councillor uh, Herger. I don't object to being involved in each one, but like anything that will come before budget, we have to prioritize and make decisions. I don't think we have enough information with the changes that have happened with SMART and are evolving and SMART is gonna be used as part of the Gray County uh, fleet, if you will, when required and as required, that's a change in, in direction. And as far as the airport goes, I'm not sure what value it brings to West Gray at this point. That doesn't make it bad, it doesn't make it that you wanna exit it, but you need to understand to make that right decision. And making a decision whether you're in or out of something also will affect your budget. 
by the same token, we are going to have a lot of priorities in front of us at budget right. time, and we need to make the right selection. And the only way to do that is to be informed. Thank so you, I agree Councilman. it should happen before the budget time. All right, I'm calling the vote on that. I think we're clear on it. All those in favor indicate with the next mark. Oh, sorry, <laughs> pardon me, take your toe. All those in favor indicate with a check mark, all those opposed with an X mark. All right, and as I call your name, please identify your name and how you are voting. So Mayor Christine Robinson, I'm not in favor of this motion. Councillor Townsend. Sorry, Councillor Townsend in favor. Councillor Herger. Councillor Herger, yes. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, no. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, not in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, <clears throat> excuse me, no. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Motion lost. Okay, members of council, could you please clear your dashboard? Um, I'm gonna suggest we take a um, well-needed lunch break. So I'm going to propose that we come back at 20 after one. That would give us enough time to um, you know, have some, some lunch and, and uh, come back and we will be dealing with uh, the rest of the agenda. So with that, I don't see any anybody rushing to come back any sooner. Uh, but I will, members of council, Sedino's committee. I would I will be starting the uh, meeting at 1:20 sharp. So I look to you for uh, your attendance here as staff. I look to your attendance for being here at 1:20. Thank you very much. Please enjoy your lunch break. Well done so far. Hello everyone, it's Christine Robinson. Thank you very much for returning uh, promptly after our um, brief uh, lunch break. I do acknowledge, I see uh, Councillor Hutchin is, uh, Hutchinson is here, Councillor Hamilton, Councillor Herger, Councillor Shea, and myself. That does represent a quorum. We are gonna continue on and we'll just acknowledge when uh, Councillor Townsend and Deputy Mayor Hutchinson um, arrive through uh, Madam Clerk. Okay, so with that, if you could clear your dashboards, thank you all. Uh, we're now going to begin on item 3.1.2, insurance information update for committees of council. Um, Madam Clerk, I think we've uh, addressed all of that, but I uh, want to uh, say is, um, Let's deal with the motion at hand. If you could read that, I'll look for a mover and seconder, but then your comment in terms of have we, have we addressed everything that we need to with respect to um, this item? And then let's just perhaps move on to the next uh, agenda item. Okay, thank you through your worship. I think everything about uh, this extra report has been addressed. It was really just an update uh, piece for the committee report. So okay. the recommendation is that committee of the whole receive the report insurance information update for committees of council for information. Is there a mover for this um, motion or this recommendation? Councillor Herger, are you moving this motion? Councillor Herger, yes. Councillor Hamilton, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Hamilton, I second the motion. All those in favor, signify with a check mark. Those opposed, with an X mark. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Um, Councillor Hutchinson. Sir Hutchinson, um, just before we, I vote, um, sorry, yes. I was a little distracted to start there. Are we voting on the, in, the insurance package? Yes, <laughs> this is, um, I, I thank you for the clarity uh, that you need. This is with respect to 3.1.2, insurance information update for committees of council. Clerk Sherbeck has read the motion at hand, uh, which is uh, contained in the report, uh, contained on the agenda page, that the committee of the whole received the report insurance information update for committees of council for information. <laughs> Moved by Councillor Hergert, seconded by Councillor Hamilton. Okay. Sorry, I, I did have a question and I don't know if I, I didn't get my hand up soon enough, I guess. Can I ask a question? Yes, ask your question. Okay, um, so in the package, <clears throat> I just have to refer to it here. Um, 
it talks about a rate. So, um, for example, let's say a pickup uh, hockey group wanted to, um, if they're using the facility, they rent the facility. So we're sort of suggesting that they need to buy insurance besides renting the facility, right? Is that what we're saying? Quick share back. I'm not sure which user group or were you talking about a, a program we offer or a specific user group? The, the insurance information included is from Cowens, our municipal right. insurer. And it's specifically to deal with um, how we can support some of the um, committees. Uh, groups that are currently listed as committees of council, but not properly protected and might do better right. as a community group with this facility user agreement. So yes, um, on every booking, there would be um, a booking form and on the bottom of that form or somewhere there would be a, a mention of the insurance uh, fee, whether it's $2 or $5, whatever it turns out to be. And we talked about working out um, possibly a, a community grant process mm -hmm. or, or some way of allowing certain community groups to have that uh, nominal fee waived and individuals would not. And right. so, groups like the Lions Club that have insurance already could just provide proof of insurance. Right, so that's something fairly new. So like we have different groups using our facilities, whether it be for, uh, for ball hockey, pickup hockey, figure skating, et cetera. So we're suggesting that they all should be purchasing insurance through us or have their own insurance if they're using the facilities. Is that what we're saying? Well, everybody needs to be insured. Most of those groups have their own insurance. Um, figure skating would have their own insurance. <clears throat> yeah, well, I'm thinking so pick up hockey, for example. Proof. Uh, pick up this, hockey, yeah. Yeah, the so. facility user insurance that Cowens has outlined for committees as a solution um, for those volunteers um, is not going to cover any contact sports. No. Well, they have the listing there. And I, I'm just looking at some of the listing, um, you know, like uh, graduations, uh, fa fashion shows. I'm just saying all the different things that go into our arena facilities. I think people sort of expect they're using the facilities that so they're they're somewhat covered. I know things like stag and does are different because they they as part of their permit, they have to have insurance. But I'm just thinking the regular users if they're not part of an organized group, like the non-organized groups, um, probably aren't aware that they need insurance. So that's something that's new, I would say, that we need to uh, communicate. And then when I look at excluded activities. No, that's not new. And, and this is just that's specific to the committees, correct? Yeah. Councilor, well, we're just dealing with the committees at hand with regard to this. Quick, Sherbet, could you just e confirm that? Because I'd like to the get on the facility user insurance um is something that every everybody who uses our facilities needs some kind of insurance so if we haven't asked for documentation of that before Cowens is expecting that we tidy up that piece okay. and that's why the line would be added to the booking forms but for our community groups that are doing volunteer work on behalf of our community we had talked earlier about uh, this is a good solution for them because the municipal insurance is not covering them as committees of council because they're not meeting the requirements that uh, the insurers have set out for committees. So yeah. this would be an option for them to yeah. continue serving the community, but slightly <laughs> different title. Well, I, I understand that, but I, but I think, uh, and I think there's some other councillors got and won't chime in here, but I think there's a number of groups that use our facilities that don't purchase insurance every time they use the facility, or unless I'm wrong. And um, uh, I can think of I can think of some groups. So, okay, that, thank yeah. you. I, and and uh, staff are hearing that, so they'll mm -hmm. uh, address that. But specific to this motion, that um, committee of the whole received the report insurance information update wait maybe i need to take off my glasses that are not for reading that the committee of the whole received the report insurance information update for committees of council for information moved by councillor herger seconded by councillor hamilton okay so we're now 
calling the vote. Yeah. Oh. So I had identified in favor of, of uh, the motion, Councillor Hutchinson. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the insurance besides, we'll have to have another discussion on that another time. Right. For, for now, uh, that's fine. I'm in favor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hutchinson, would you mind just stating your name? Sorry. I just want to. Oh. Sure. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Thank you. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you, yes, you are here? Deputy yeah, I had problems signing in. Sorry, Mayor Robinson. It's Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, I am in favor. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Councillor Herger. Councillor Herger, yes. Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend, in favor. That motion does carry. Okay, thank you. If you wouldn't mind clearing the dashboard. We are now moving on to item four, staff reports, 4.1, coordinator office of the CAO, 4.1.1, inclement weather policy. Clerk Sharbach, could you please read the recommendation? Okay, your worship, the recommendation is that the report on the inclement weather policy be received and further that committee recommends council approve the West Gray inclement weather policy. Is there a mover for this motion? Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you moving this motion? This is Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. I will move the motion, but I have a uh... I'm going to like to please. You, uh, pardon me. You, what do you need to do? Sorry, your audio. I would like to add something to it, please. Clerk Sherbeck, can uh, the mover of the motion add what he needs to at this time? Yep. Go ahead. Please go ahead. Okay. Thank you again. It's uh, Deputy Mayor Hutchinson here. I just bear with me. Under uh, office, what page is this? One of throughout page 29 of 100 on our report, one of three on the uh, on the package, office closures and cancellation services. Uh, under that, in the event inclement weather conditions are present and is necessary to close offices and or services, the CAO and or the appropriate or designated director shall approve the closures. I would like to have the mayor or well, I'd like to have the mayor added into that. That's kind of how we've been doing it for the last couple of years. And I think that uh, corresponds our communication with the mayor as well as the CAO and then it rolls out from there. Thank you. Okay, so quick share back with regard to the motion that the uh, deputy mayor is, is moving. Uh, he is uh, suggesting that there be, I'm gonna phrase it this way, an amendment to the uh, draft policy that the mayor be included in the, uh, so be the mayor and CAO in consultation together. Uh, whether um, the office is closed. Paraphrasing, but is that the intent of your motion? Yes, uh, thank you uh, very much. Perfect over Smith there, Mayor Robinson. Um, so, um, Clerk Sharbeck, in terms of um, his, uh, the deputy motion, um, that the report on the inclement weather policy be received and further that the committee recommends amend, uh, amended West Gray inclement policy. Does that fit the, the bill here? Yes, I just, um, Deputy Mayor, could you tell me the section again? I would like to say that the committee recommends council approve the West Gray inclement weather policy as amended um, by adding the mayor or uh, the amended to add the mayor in section which section? I'm not sure. It's, it's uh, again, this is Deputy Mayor. It's under, um, you got scope, procedure, definitions, and then the next one is office closure and canceling services. And that would be on page office one of three. And canceling services. So I'm seeing, if I could help, with regard to the actual draft policy, I'm seeing that uh, scope, there's purpose scope and then you're suggesting procedure, the CAO and directors for, for with respect to the CAO and the mayor be responsible for the 
administration of this policy and that um, that the mayor and the CAO in consultation together uh, be responsible for uh, the closure of uh, the office. And is that correct? Yeah, I think, yes, I actually was, I was just, I rolled back up. I think under procedure, I think that is an appropriate spot to implement that. And then under the actual office closure and canceling services, the first sentence actually, uh, there would be a spot there that I think it should be. Well. Okay, so section procedure, and then under office closure and cancellation of service. So what you're suggesting is, it'll be the mayor and the CIO in, in consultation. That is what you're moving the, emo uh, the your motion at this point. That is correct, Mayor Robinson. Clerk Sherbeck, I'm now going to um, get a seconder for this motion. Councillor Hamilton, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Hamilton, I second the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Now with that, questions and comments, just overall on the policy as well. Beginning with Councillor Townsend and then Councillor Shea, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. It's Councillor Townsend. Um, First of all, I'd like to suggest a friendly amendment to that um, that motion that it just be um, as amended because I think some of us, I know I do, may have comments already. So rather than just focusing on one change, we don't want to list them all, I'm assuming, uh, in the motion. Defer to the clerk, but thank you very much for the question, Councillor Townsend, or the comment. I do need the amendments to the policy clarified if it's different from what's presented. So what I have is, and the amendments should be clear um, and the resolution is a good place to put that or um, I'm, I'm not sure how else to make that as transparent. Um, okay. So what I, I have now is- that. Oh. Right, I don't have a problem with, with doing it. That was, that was my question. Because okay. do we want to do a motion for every change or do we want to amend it to say as amended or do we list them all? And I, I'm okay either way, <clears throat> but it would change the motion depending on how we approach this. That's why so we I'm have asking. a mover. We have a mover and seconder for this motion. And then I'm just gonna suggest, and then uh, uh, Madam Clerk, you can tell me if it is correct procedurally, but we have a, a motion duly on the floor. Let's have the other discussion if there's any other additions. So at this point in time, it's moved and seconded. Uh, it reads that the report uh, be received and further that committee recommends council approve the implement weather policy as amended by including the mayor in section procedure, um, office closure and counseling services to reflect that the mayor and CAO in collaboration determine um, the office closures. So, that's what's on the floor. Changes are now uh, mover and seconder to an amendment. Okay, that's clear. That's really that's really great. We've done this. We've gone down this path before. So we have um, one amendment at this time. I'm going to suggest, unless a clerk tells me anything different, Councillor Townsend, can we hear what other suggestions you might have? And then, of course, we have our mover and seconder that can determine if there's any further amendments they wish to include in their motion, okay? Sure. Okay. Okay, so on the same page, um, but when we talk about the scope uh, of the um, declaration or the, the policy, it says, um, with the exception of critical positions and employees with the West Gray Library and West Gray Police Service, I also think and would suspect fire would be in that. And that's because all three of those have their own plan. Okay. Right, so that's that's number one. Um, is that captured okay? Uh, number two would be under definitions. I don't think that the tornadoes, hurricanes, and that would be included under this policy because it's under the emergency control group, like our emergency plan, which is managed by the emergency control group, which determines, I believe, that type of thing. And I'll, I'll defer to the mayor on that as a, a member of that group. Okay, well, yes, what I could, um, if I might, I can um, 
I can let you know that with regard to inclement weather, I would I would suggest that is um, like stormy weather, like snowstorms, ice storms, fog, um, and with regard to tornadoes, hurricanes, flooding, that definitely um, that is a different um, category, if you will, and that does. Uh, relate to the emergency preparedness plan. So maybe the, the definition of inclement weather needs to be um, addressed for more clarity in terms of the scope of, of, uh, of what is actually um, addressed here. Okay. Um, on the next page under method of notification, it talks about um, employees have the responsibility to determine if inclement weather or impending inclement weather will have an impact on their workplace. It's or their ability to attend their workplace. So if someone lives on the other side of West Gray, then where the office is, you might be getting different weather. So the office, their workplace might be fine, but their ability to get there may not. So where's that counselor? It's under method of notification. Okay. Uh, I'm wondering uh, for that, um, I would go to Madam Clerk. Would you like to comment on something before I go any I, further? Because you look like you have something to say. Um, well, I'm just uh, listening to the, the points being raised. Yes. And thank you, Mayor. I think um, it, not, every, um, not every flood is a declared emergency but it may impact some employees' ability to get to work. Absolutely. And do they get paid for that day or not? So this is um, really a, a health and safety policy, right? Uh, so employees need to know what the scoop is and that they are not obligated to go out if they feel conditions are risky. So if the roads are closed for whatever reason, or they're not able to attend, what's the plan? And if they are able to attend technically, but perhaps don't feel safe doing so, mm -hmm. what's the plan for that? It's using lieu time or vacation day so that at no time an employee mm -hmm. uh, feels pressured to get themselves into an unsafe or perhaps frightening um, situation on the road. Sure. That's, that's the intent. So yeah. not every... Um, not every one of those um, other weather events ends up with a declared emergency, which would have the emergency plan kick in. And I'm not sure the emergency plan is um, clear in, okay, how does it, but does the office staff get paid that day? <laughs> which is kind of a valid question if, if you're one of those staff members, right? So I think I, the CIO I, could have really that, but. Yeah, sorry to interrupt, but I'm not even okay. talking about that aspect of it. What I'm Go saying ahead. is the first paragraph on page two is um, headed method of notification. And it says employees have the responsibility to determine if inclement weather or pending inclement weather will have an impact on their workplace. What I'm suggesting is not just whether it'll have an impact on their workplace, it's whether it has an impact on their ability to attend their workplace. Whether they get paid or not is a totally separate issue that gets dealt with later. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Impact on the workplace means they can't access it. Their inability to get there may mean the workplace is fine. They're not. They're trapped somewhere. They've got different weather than what the workplace has. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So I'm looking for your amendment on that. And as we move along, we've got, count, uh, we've got uh, CAO Johnston. Um, and I do know that um, we, um, I will invite um, the author of um, the report. I don't think the CAO wrote it. I think, uh, just a moment. Just let me flip back. I'm using a couple of different pages. So the author of the report is uh, uh, coordinator uh, Jonathan Zettel. So we can um, have some information from him as well. But I do, um, as you've got the, the mic, Councillor Townsend, what was your suggested change with regard to method of notification? At the end, you say, or their ability to attend the workplace. Mm -hmm. 
All right, thank you. Anything right. further before I go to Madam CIO at this point? Yeah, if you go to page during office closures and council uh, services, it says that we'll use email or whatever, voicemail. If we don't have hydro or things like that, um, I get concerned that people within the municipality and or employees won't be able to get notified. Is there any consideration for how that will occur? I don't need an answer um, today because that, that obviously, this year seems to be more around the electronic or the requirement for hydro. So I'm not sure what that means. Um, I think there's at least one more. Uh, voluntary absence due to inclement weather uh, doesn't give people the opportunity to work from home only on an office closure. And I wonder if that consideration should be added. So that's a question, not a request to change. Okay. Well, thank you, Councillor Townsend. I'm going to go to Madam uh, CIO. And then also if, um, if um, uh, she's suggesting go to Jonathan Zettler, coordinator, uh, for you know just a response on on this. We do have other members of council following that, which would be Councillor Shea and Councillor Hamilton. Okay, Madam CIO, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I'm, I'm happy to answer these questions, please. And thank you, Councillor Townsend, for um, for your uh, observation. So, if I can start from the beginning, the uh, definition of inclement weather, as the clerk had alluded to. Uh, you know, a, a flood could happen anywhere. It doesn't have to be a flood that affects the West Gray office. So if, uh, you know, a staff person living in Hanover, for example, they experience flooding, that's, that's, a, that's a, um, an inclement weather event to them. So those definitions were taken from other policy, or sorry, those examples were taken from other policies. I'll leave it to council to determine what they'd like to do if we take them away, then I suppose this is really just a winter closing um, policy. The other one about um, over to the top of the second page of the policy, employees have the responsibility to determine. I actually am quite thankful for your observation on that counselor and I, and I would support adding on to that uh, an impact on their workplace or their ability to attend their workplace. I think that's very good clarification, um, speaking to, to options out there. Um, <clears throat> and your final question about voluntary absence due to inclement weather. Um, so this, this really is if someone feels that they, they just don't feel safe to drive. The roads are not closed, the building is open, um, but they're just not comfortable in, in winter conditions. Uh, and if they choose that they would like to just take the day off, we just wanted to capture in, in there that that's okay. You don't, we didn't want people to feel pressured that, you know, if we're coming to work and they can't make it or they're not comfortable, there's, there's no pressure or expectation for them to continue working from home. If they would like to work from home, that's arrangements that they would need to make in advance with their supervisor. And I believe we've captured that um, in another part. Well, it's really kept captured if we close the office. So if they've chosen not to not to come to work because of their comfort level or their fear of their safety, um, I, if they're equipped to work from home, then that would be a conversation that they could have with their supervisor. Okay, Councillor Townsend, anything further at this point? Uh, it seems that um, these are, and I will go to the mover and seconder as, as, as we're moving along in the discussion to see if that is something that we can capture in, in the, um, the motion overall. Anything Thank further, you. Councillor? Thank you. I thought the, the offer to work at home was only upon office closure, not their discomfort. And that's why I raised it, just so okay. they realize they have that ability, right? Because yes. it doesn't say under that premise they do. So anyway, I'll leave it with you to decide, but that was the... Um, that was the observation. CEO Johnson. Yes, thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. And, and thank you, Councillor. If not everyone is equipped to work from home, so those staff that don't yep. have that ability, <clears throat> this was really meant to give them comfort that um, we support their decision to stay safe and stay home. Okay, thank you. Thank you as well. Councillor Shea, please. Uh, yes, Councillor Shea, I just like the CAO's uh, uh, to weigh in on the initial amendment to uh, add the mayor into the discussions on the closure is was that left out because this was seen as an operational issue or um, if I may madam mayor through you 
Uh, yes, Councilor Shea, this, this really was, was viewed as an operations decision. However, having a, a quick call with the mayor is, is not cumbersome and hasn't delayed decision making in the past. So if that's um, what committee would like to do, that's an easy amendment to make. Councilor Shea, I can tell you that we've been operating under um, that um, practice. And in the past, I know it does say in the report that there, um, there isn't a um, policy, but there was. Uh, I don't know why it wasn't tracked in the book, but that's fine. There was a policy in the past where it was consultation with the mayor and CAO. Uh, certainly these last two years, and cer certainly at the beginning, uh, when um, the CAO and I had discussion, um, it, it was uh, determined that we were obviously going to continue that. And uh, we've had that in practice and utilized it this past year uh, for um, uh, the giant snowstorm that we had. And that carried over to two days. So the consultation with, uh, with the CAO and myself, I, I see as beneficial. And I was able to um, get the phone calls out to the members of council. Because as you know, when you close this office, that level of service is not available to our citizens. So you need to know that that decision was made um, appropriately uh, and uh, that you're communicated out so that when you get the call from citizens in terms of is the office open or is it not, you have that information uh, at hand. So it has been, um, uh, as far as I was con concerned, the policy uh, that we've been acting under um, and I would appreciate if that continues. Okay, fine. I was just uh, asking for the CAO's input on that, but thanks very much. Thank you. Councillor Hamilton now. Thank you very much. I have um, not much to add, just a question about um, if we have a working from home policy. I know that with COVID, certainly we all had to learn to work from home <laughs> in different ways. And, and perhaps too, we've learned some lessons from COVID, uh, some new ways of working too. And I think that's for another day, that conversation, but I was just wondering if we have a work from home policy and procedure for staff. Thank you. Madam CAO. Uh, through Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Hamilton for that question. Mm -hmm. We don't have an official policy. We were following guidelines provided to us through public health uh, in the interim, but you raise an excellent point and that would be our next order of business because I do see the, um, the new reality and it's something that we should make sure that we that staff have clarity about so thank you for that yeah councillor hamilton I, I think that's really important I, I think that's clarity for staff as madam cio has said but i think it's also clarity for our citizens uh that they'll see that policy as well and that they know what that expectation is and and that it's clearly uh, identified in, in the policy so um great good. Any, thank you anything further no thanks i look forward to that that next step i appreciate that thanks very much you're quite welcome. Councillor Herger, please. Yes, thank you. I have a question about, um, it was somewhat mentioned, I think by the clerk, that this could be um, under the health and safety aspect. Um, I was curious if this actually came as a recommendation from the employee uh, consultation committee that we have. And has this run been run past any employees, like our senior staff is, is everybody agreeable? Is there any um, any angst about what's written? Madam CAO, I'll go to you first, and then if you choose to um, assign it to somebody else to answer, please proceed. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor, for the question. This did not come from the Employee Consultation Committee, uh, partly because that committee has not been meeting. Uh, we're in emergency mode. Um, under the declaration. So we're just uh, focusing on essential services. So the committee hasn't been meeting. However, um, this partly with our eScribe system, but in, in particular, we did speak with um, our director of public works because his staff for the most part may not be captured under this policy and, and wanted to make sure that we were capturing um, that if there was something that we needed to incorporate for that staff, but you know, designating them as critical services actually addresses, addresses that team. The, um, uh, and, and through the eScribe, all of the senior management team reads the, um, the report and has an opportunity to provide feedback. And um, my feedback has been that staff are supportive of this direction. It just provides the clarity that we didn't have in our employee handbook for, for um, previous years. And if I, yes, if I might just ask the CAO a bit of a similar question as Councillor Shea, is there any reason that we need to have council 
um, involved and and to that point that actually the mayor involved if it is more of an operational issue and then sending out an email immediately after that decision is made I think is quite a reasonable expectation. Do you see the need for a, a member of council to be included on this? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, well, it, it is an operational, you know, it, it speaks to a change in service level. So yes. I, I believe that council support and assistance in sharing this through your communication channels is, is invaluable because we can't possibly reach all of the citizens. Um, you know, more voices help get the message out there, making the decision, um, you know, it's, um, it's whichever this committee would like to do. Um, I'm fine if, if the mayor continues to be consulted, um, but you know, sharing that information with council, I think helps to get the information out to the community in general. There was a question earlier about hydro and how, you know, if, if it's a hydro outage, how do we communicate? Um, we, once this policy is passed, we will be speaking with staff to advise them, please keep your cell phones charged up because we would be texting everybody. And there may be an opportunity, Madam CAO, that um, if, if there's if there's hydro, you may, you may have to look at other means and whether that's posters, uh, poster at the front door or 